Thanks for tuning in to today's broadcast of a live sports event featuring the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. Today's broadcast is being streamed by and is under the authority of AA Sports Properties. Today's broadcast is made possible because of the generous support of the following sponsors. The Abernathy Independent School District, Nutrien Ag Solutions, First State Bank, The First Baptist Church, South Plains Auto Ranch, Abel Funeral Home and Flower Shop, St. Isidore Catholic Church, Plains Land Bank, St. Clair and Massey Orthodontics, Lambert Insurance, The Junk and Farmer's Market, Nana's Donuts, DB Media, JC Refrigeration, Vista Bank, Web Vision Center, Ty Horsford with Movements Real Estate, and the Abernathy Little League Baseball Association. When you're looking to do business in any of these industries, we encourage you to check out these businesses when you can. To join these businesses and organizations and to show your support for the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes on our broadcasts, you can call or text 806-773-4658. Thanks again for watching and we hope you enjoy the broadcast of this live sports event featuring the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. And good evening, Abernathy, Texas, and good evening, fans of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. It is the final Friday in August, and that can only mean one thing. School is in session, and it is Friday Night Lights here as the Abernathy Antelopes have hit the road for one of their longest road trips of the season here to open the 2023 season as we have made our way to Fair Park Stadium here in Childress, Texas, uh, as we are at home of the Childress Bobcats. And tonight, the Abernathy Antelopes are set to tangle with the Childress Bobcats. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. Uh, voice of the Antelopes, Ty Horsford, with you here tonight from Childress as we're about seven or eight minutes out from the kickoff of the 2023 season. And glad to have you along for the ride, the season opener for both teams here tonight. These two teams met a year ago in the season opener as well. It was a good one back in Abernathy as it was Childress edging the Antelopes last season, 16-14. to 14. These two teams have played five times since 2015, and uh, Childress 3-2 and two against the Abernathy Antelopes over that five-game span. If we take a look tonight at the opponent, the Childress Bobcats, they went 7-5 and five a year ago, they went four and one in district and lost in the second round of the playoffs uh, to the Wall Hawks by the count of 44 to 10. Um, from that team, the Bobcats are returning eight offensive starters and four on the defensive side as head coach Bo Helm enters his second season leading the Bobcats. While Childress will be without standout name that you might remember, remember from last year, Lamont Nickelberry. He graduated a year ago. They still return some familiar names. As You've got quarterback Scout Smith. Uh, he led the Bobcats last year at quarterback as well. He's a solid dual-threat quarterback. Uh, he can beat you on the ground as well as through the air. Also in the backfield for Childress, you've got running back Darion Mathis. As Mathis returns at the running back position, as he rushed for over 1,100 yards, last season. Really, the Bobcat offense runs through him. Childress predicted to finish by most uh, second in District 3, 3A Division II behind none other than uh, a name we've all become familiar with in the West Texas and Panhandle region of high school football, the Canadian Wildcats. They are pegged to be one of the favorites in the region again. As that's a quick look tonight at the opponent, the Childress Bobcats, Abernathy, will have their hands full tonight with a very talented uh, and senior-laden uh, Childress Bobcat team. So it will be tough for the Antelopes tonight. Let's take a quick look here prior to kickoff at the Abernathy Antelopes. As the Antelopes finished last season 8-3, and three, they were the district champions, but they finished the season kind of on a sour note as they were upseeded by the fourth-seeded Spearman Lynx 
in the opening round of the playoffs as uh, they fell short to Spearman 21-7 to uh, a year ago. Coach Justin Wiley will have lots of new faces as the Antelopes return only four starters on each side of the ball and have a plethora of guys playing two ways as depth not necessarily going to be the strength of this Antelope team uh, this season. Staying healthy going to be an absolute key for the Abernathy Antelope success in 2023. The leader on and off the field for this team, none other than running back Alan Macias. They call him Monkey, uh, who has looked sharp in the preseason. We did get word, though, he may be dealing with a little bit of a sore hip tonight, so not sure what that means for playing time for Alan Macias. That's going to be something to watch as we go throughout the game here today. Uh, so the Abernathy Antelopes are uh, going to be led at signal caller at quarterback position tonight by 5'8 junior Elijah Trejo. He started for the Antelopes uh, at the JV level last season, and uh, he's getting the nod in his first varsity start at quarterback here tonight. Elijah Trejo leading the Abernathy Antelopes on to the field. Really is, uh, you look at tonight's game, some keys to the game, if you will, um, don't beat yourself. I think it's important to not turn the ball over. Don't make lots of penalties. Uh, control the ball if you can. Um, you want to, want to make this a fast game, but you want to win the battle, the time of possession, if you will, if you're the Abernathy Antelopes. And you want to stay competitive early. Lots of emotions uh, for a season opener on both sides, and you want to come out steady and solid and keep this one close early um, here tonight. Is the Abernathy Antelopes... And the Childress Bobcats tonight getting ready to do battle from Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. Glad to have you with us as they are currently doing the national anthem here and honoring America prior to the kickoff. We are uh, in an enclosed press box tonight, and unfortunately we cannot hear that or bring that to you. But nonetheless, they are just about ready for kickoff down on the turf here tonight from Childress, Texas. A uh, historic stadium here at Fair Park uh, Stadium in Childress. We're at Charlie Johnston Field, and it uh, should be a fun night to open the season for the Abernathy Antelopes here in Childress, Texas. Again, glad to have you with us, not only tonight, but all season long on the Abernathy Antelope Sports Network. We'll uh, note a lot of our sponsors that are making these broadcasts possible as well through the night. If you see those around town, tell them thank you. Um, and uh, when you can, do business with those guys. They are proud supporters of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. And uh, they make these broadcasts possible. We're close to ready for kickoff tonight as the Childress Bobcats are going to be wearing their home blue uniforms tonight as uh, the Bobcats all blue look with white numerals and trim Across the way, the Abernathy Antelope is going to be wearing the road white tonight, trimmed in maroon with the maroon helmets. It is Friday Night Lights and football time in Texas. It doesn't quite feel like it outside. It's another day near 100 to degrees today in West Texas. Maybe not quite what most would consider uh, football weather, but nonetheless, it is great to be back out here and great to uh, be bringing you some Abernathy Antelope football here tonight. So glad to have you with us on the broadcast. It is the Abernathy Antelopes and the Childress Bobcats getting ready for battle here tonight as we're going to kick it off for the Antelopes as uh, it's going to be Abernathy kicking it off. Number seven, Levi Carrillo will do the honors. He will kick it off here for the Antelopes back deep to receive for the Bobcats as you've got number 10, Isaiah Holomo, uh, back there, along with Mark Willis as well, both seniors back deep to return this opening kickoff for the Bobcats. Is Carrillo set to put his foot into it? And we're going to get things started here tonight. The 2023 season is underway. It's a high and short kickoff returnable from the 20-yard line coming to the near side of the field out across the 35-yard line on the run back as number 21 takes it. That's Mark Willis on the return for the 
Childress Bobcats. It'll be first down and 10 as Childress will take over as we'll start just across the 35 at about the 36-yard line. Ball's going to be spotted just inside that left hash mark. As the Antelopes and the Childress Bobcats tonight from Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. Again, Scout Smith leading the charge for Childress. He is going to be in the shotgun formation with trips out to the right side. First snap of 2023. It's a handoff to the near side. Good blocking up front. Out across the 40-yard line goes the handoff for Childress as number 20, uh, Darion Mathis. We talked about him over 1,100 rushing yards a year ago. Takes the first handoff for Childress, and it will be second down and six after about a gain of four yards. As the Antelope defense out there for the first time here in 2023, as again in the shotgun. Is the signal caller, man in motion. That is going to be Oldham. Now rolling far side, out to the far side, looking to throw in the flat. It is underthrown and incomplete. And uh, I may be wrong as I've been saying Scout Smith is there at quarterback. In fact, running the snaps right now is Drake Rabe, um, or Rabe. We'll get a clarification on that pronounce, pronunciation as we go along. But his pass is out in the fats. It's incomplete. And it will be third down and six from the 40-yard line. Abernathy Antelope's trying to get a stand here on third down and get off the field here on the opening drive of the ball game. In the shotgun, there's the snap. Lots of time thrown to the near side. The pass is caught out across the 45-yard line as number 80 hauls it in. That is Cash Hightower on the reception. That is going to be close to a first down, and it is a first down for the Childress Bobcats as they keep this opening drive alive. First down and 10 for the Bobcats as they get it out to the 46 as they're nearing midfield going right to left here on your internet dial. In the shotgun is... Rabe, he's standing at about the 41-yard line. Screen pass to the far side. It is caught at about midfield. It's hauled in by number 21, Mark Willis, as Willis hauls it in for a gain of about four out to near midfield. And uh, it's going to be second down coming up. Is going to be second down in about six after a gain of four, if you will. And... Uh, Right at midfield here for the Bobcats. In the shotgun again is Rabe. He's going to take the snap. Ball loose on the field, and it's going to be a turnover as Abernathy is going to come up with a fumble, a bobbled little pitch in the backfield, and the Abernathy Antelopes have forced the first turnover of 2023 as coming up with the recovery, it's Dane Provost in the Childress backfield, and that is going to be a defensive stand for the Abernathy Antelopes. Defensive stops and turnovers this year brought to you by the South Plains Auto Ranch in Abernathy, and Abernathy comes up with turnover number one. It was a mishandled pitch in the Childress backfield uh, that hit the turf, and Provost was in the right place at the right time, and Abernathy takes over in Childress territory for their first offensive possession of the night. Good start for the Antelope defense, and it will be first down and 10 as the Antelopes are going to have it from the 43, a golden opportunity here out of the gates for the Abernathy Antelopes. It's Joe Trejo out leading the Antelopes, or check that, Elijah Trejo out leading the Antelopes onto the field here. First start as a varsity quarterback leading the Abernathy Antelopes onto the field. Trejo 5'8", 155 pounds as he leads the Antelopes onto the field. First down and 10 here for Abernathy. Again, just underway, no score between the Antelopes and the Bobcats. In the shotgun, 
is Trejo. Trejo takes the snap. Handoff is going to the left side, trying to find a hole and getting the edge and down the sideline, one offensive play, and it is going to be an Abernathy Antelope touchdown as Levi Carrillo takes the sweep around the left end, and what a start for the good guys as Abernathy strikes first as they are into the end zone as that is a touchdown brought to you by the Abernathy First Baptist Church. And how do you do, Antelope fans? Heck of a way to start the season. You get a defensive stop and turnover. And on the first play from scrimmage, 40 yards, Levi Carrillo around the edge, takes it to the end zone, and the Abernathy Antelopes have struck first as the PAT is up, and it is... Did he make it or he made it? It is good. And the Abernathy Antelopes have a 7 0 lead. How about that? A heck of a start for Abernathy. We'll take a quick timeout and come back. You're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football. You don't have to travel across the state to find a used car. South Plains Auto Ranch, right here in Abernathy, has you covered. Austin and his team are ready to go to work for you to get you in your new ride. With in-house financing available, South Plains Auto Ranch is a win-win situation. Come see us today on South Avenue D in Abernathy or give us a call at 806-298-2200. We are behind the Lopes and the Lady Lopes this season. And welcome back here to Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas, where the Abernathy Antelopes have jumped out to a 7-0 lead behind a 40-yard touchdown run on their first offensive play from scrimmage, a sweep around the left side by Levi Carrillo, and the Abernathy Antelopes lead it 7 to nothing, as that was following a fumble recovery by Provost, and the Antelopes set to kick it off again. It's coming to the near side. It is going to be returnable from the 20-yard line, trying to pick and choose his way through defenders for Childress, number 22, Logan Oldham on the run back, and it'll be first down and 10 as the Childress Bobcats will take over for the second time today. Our kickoffs and extra points this season brought to you by First State Bank in Abernathy, and we've got an early First State Bank extra point as Abernathy leads it 7 to nothing here on the broadcast. 9.24 left to play in the first quarter. First down and 10 for the Bobcats. Raby in the shotgun takes the snap. He's going to look to try and keep it up the middle. The Antelope stay Home defensively as number 21 comes up to make the stop is uh, Alan Macias right in the middle of the field coming up to make the tackle, doing it on the defensive side of the ball after a gain of just one, and it will be second down and nine here for the Bobcats. Again, they are moving right to left here in the first quarter of the ball game. Again, Rabe in the shotgun formation. Movement up front. This might be a free play. And Rabe knows that he tosses it deep down the right sideline, very alertly does so. The pass well covered, and it does fall incomplete. But this is going to be a five-yard flag against the Antelope defense as um, it's going to be a couple of guys jumping off sides up front for that Antelope defense. 8.45 left to play here in the first quarter, and the Abernathy Antelopes do lead it 7 to nothing as it couldn't have scripted a better start, a defensive stop and turnover forced, and then one play, 40 yards, had the Antelopes in the end zone to get the ball game started here tonight. Again, glad you're with us on the broadcast as the Abernathy Antelopes open the season here in 2023. Five-yard penalty is going to move the ball out close to the 40-yard line. Again, Childress on their own side of the field. Ball's going to be spotted at the left hash mark, and it will be second down and five coming up here for the Childress Bobcats. Rabe in the shotgun stands at the 35, takes the snap and hands it off to the right side, trying to get the edge 
for Childress. That's number 20 uh, getting the handoff. Darian Mathis again takes it across the first down marker, and it's the second Childress first down of the night as he takes it out to about the 45-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 as the Bobcats move the chains here for the home team. Ball at the 45-yard line in the shotgun. Again is Rave. He's going to take the snap, empty backfield, looking to throw, steps in the pocket, fires it deep. He has a man. That would have been six if the connection would have been made. Is wide open down the field was Isaiah Holomo, the senior, but the ball just overthrown and incomplete. There is a flag down, though, uh, in the uh, Bobcat backfield. So we will check the penalty here, if you will. It is going to be against Abernathy as we're going to have an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for the Antelopes, and that's something you just absolutely can't have. That's a 15-yarder and a free first down for Childress. That's going to move the Bobcats into Abernathy territory for the first time today. That's going to move it to the 40-yard line. And those are those mistakes when we talk about keys to the game. You can't beat yourself. Uh, that is not what you want to see. An unsportsmanlike conduct flag here against the Antelopes early. First down and 10 for Childress as that moves it to the 40-yard line. Again, Abernathy leading 7 to nothing here on the road early from Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. 8.09 left to play here in the opening quarter. Trey Graves again going to take the snap. Again, he hands it up the middle to Mathis, and Mathis, he's a tough cat to bring down. He takes it inside the 35 down to the 34-yard line where it will be a gain of six more for Darion Mathis, bring up second down and four for the Bobcats. In the shotgun again, quick snaps as they hurry it up. Handoff goes again to Mathis, this time to the near side, and this time the Antelope defense does a pretty good job in pursuit. There are about three white jerseys there to make the tackle as leading the way for that Antelope defense, number 50, Dyson Garcia, comes up with the stop, and it's going to be third down and short. Coming up here for the Bobcats. Third down and about two from just outside the Antelope 30-yard line here for Childress. Rabe is in the shotgun as he is going to slow things down a little bit, change formation in the backfield. Antelope defense calls out some instruction as well. Taking the snap is Rabe. He lost his, as check that, taking the snap that time was not Rabe, it was number 10, Isaiah Holomo, as that was part of the formation change in the backfield. He dives forward about a yard short of the first down, and it's four down territory here for the Bobcats, and a big fourth down facing Childress here on their second offensive possession of the night. In fact, uh, he didn't get as close to the first down as I thought he did. It's fourth down and a long one, almost two here. Big play for the Antelope defense. In the shotgun again is the signal caller, the snap, and I don't know that he got there as the Abernathy the Antelopes are going to make the stop again. In the middle of the field, the snap that time did go to Scout Smith, number 11. He tried to dive it forward up the middle, but he was rudely met by number 50, Dyson Garcia, and Garcia gets the stop in the middle of the field, and it's another defensive stand, this time on fourth down. For the Abernathy Antelopes, our defensive uh, stands are brought to you by the South Plains Auto Ranch. A couple big ones early here for the Abernathy Antelopes. And Abernathy's offense will again take over, this time at their own 31-yard line. As Abernathy's defense setting the tone early. And what do we got here? We may have a timeout on the field. And it looks like we will. We'll take it as well as Abernathy leads it 7 to nothing. Another big, another big defensive stop on fourth down. We'll be right back. You're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football. One of Abernathy's longest standing businesses is First State Bank. People have been choosing First State Bank for all of their financial and banking needs since 1909. We are proud to be locally owned and operated, and we have three locations across the area to serve you. 
Abernathy's First Date Bank is a longtime supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes and wish them the best of luck this season. If we can serve you in any way, drop by and see us at 402 9th Street in Abernathy or give us a call at 806 298 2556. And once again, good evening, Antelope fans, and welcome back here into Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. Voice of the Antelopes, Ty Horsford, back with you. Glad to be here. It's a heck of a start for the Abernathy Antelopes. A defensive stop on fourth down uh, just a moment ago on Abernathy's first possession. Uh, they had a defensive stand via a turnover recovered by Dane Provost, and now Abernathy's going to have their second offensive Look of the night, the uh, first one didn't last very long as it was a 40-yard touchdown run on one-play opening drive of the season. Levi Carrillo found the end zone for the good guys. First down and 10 for the Antelopes as they take over at the 31 on their own side of the field again. Uh, Elijah Trejo leading the Antelopes onto the field. Trejo stands in the shotgun. A couple guys back there with him, takes the snap, hands it off, trying to bounce it wide, and again, getting the edge as the ball carrier for the Antelopes, Allen Macias, number 21, we talked. He's playing tonight with a sore hip, didn't know how much action he would see, but he gets 12 yards right there, and that is an Abernathy Antelope first down as our first downs this season brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, as Nutrient Ag Solutions, a proud supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes. Again, Trejo is in the shotgun on first down and 10. Again, hands it off to Monkey here on the near side, and this time the Childress defense does a better job stretching to the near side. As number 61, Cade Jenkins, the ball carrier, or uh, the stop, rather, for Childress after a gain of just one for Macias. It will be second down and nine here for the Abernathy Antelopes. Trejo in the shotgun. There is movement that's going to back the Antelopes up here, I'm afraid, as that's going to be an offsides or a false start penalty against Abernathy. That's been the one, uh, one negative, if you will, here early on. A few uh, penalty markers have been tossed out against the Abernathy Antelopes. That's a five-yard penalty, and it will be second down and 14. Second down and 14 here. Abernathy traveling left to right on the internet screen. Second down and 14. Abernathy leads it 7 to nothing. Trejo is again in the shotgun to moving around on the defensive side. Handoff goes to Macias. He misdirects to the middle of the field out across the 40 to the 41. He got most of the penalty yardage back there, a gain of four up the middle for Macias, and it'll be third down and long, though, coming up here for the Antelopes. There's another flag on the play, though. Let's check this one. It's going to be a hold against the Antelopes. Let's see what Childress chooses to do here. Holding against Abernathy. The penalty is going to be declined. They're going to take third down and 11. Uh, almost 12, and so Childress yet to be penalized. Abernathy racking up the penalty yards here early. Third down and long for the Antelopes. Third down and almost 12 from the 39-yard line. They need to get just across midfield here in order to move the chains. In the shotgun is Elijah Trejo. As I think Abernathy wants to talk things over, a timeout on the field here taken by the Antelopes. We'll take one as well as you're listening tonight to Abernathy Antelope Football on the road in Childress. At Abernathy's First Baptist Church, our mission is to love God, love people, and to tell the world. Our pastor is Damon Pierce, and we meet for Sunday school at 930 and worship at 1045. We offer a number of kids and youth activities, as well as a Wednesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. We'd love to welcome you and your family to Abernathy's First Baptist Church. If you have any questions about our church, feel free to give us a call at 806-298-2587. We are proud of our community and our young people, and we wish the Lopes and Lady Lopes the best of luck this school year. 
as welcome back following the Abernathy timeout as they wanted to talk over a third down and 12 here for the Antelopes on their own side of the field. Trejo is in the shotgun, takes the snap. He's looking to throw, steps into it. He's got a receiver over the middle, but a little over the outstretched arm of number 22, Rolando Martinez, as Martinez can't come up with it on third down, and it'll be a punting situation here for the Antelopes. Fourth down and 12 for the Lopes, and they will punt it away. Back deep for Childress to run this one back will be number 10, Halomo. Abernathy, it's a line drive punt to the near side. It bounces. It's going to be picked up at the 30 by Halomo. He's got some room to run, but he runs into his own man at about the 40-yard line and then scoots out to the 45, maybe the 46. Not a bad run back there, though, by Isaiah Halomo. Good starting field position coming up here for the Bobcats as it will be first down and 10 for Childress as they will take over near midfield. Check that. There's a flag on the play. And it is going to be the first penalty of the night against Childress. In fact, there are two penalties here on this one against the Bobcats, one of them, the last of which was an illegal block in the back. That's going to be the one that hurts Childress here, and that's going to negate what was a pretty decent return on the punt by Isaiah Halomo, instead of having it out near midfield, uh, that's going to back the ball up inside the 25-yard line all the way back near the 20. So that's a big flag there against the Childress Bobcats as that is going to back them up. 436 left to play here tonight in the first quarter from Childress, Texas. Glad to have you with us in the shotgun as there is the snap of Little swing pass in the backfield to Mathis, but we've got a flag that blows it dead. That usually means somebody jumped early for the offense. And uh, I haven't seen the official signal, but waiting for the call. I'm assuming it's going to be false start here against Childress. Actually, no. They're going to wave the flag off and... So they just blew the play dead, but ultimately no penalty. And uh, we'll just do it all over again like it never happened the first time. It'll be first down and 10 for the Bobcats. Line of scrimmage is going to be about the 22-yard line. 432 left to play here in the opening quarter. In the shotgun, there's the snap to Rabe, and again, the play blown dead. This time, not due to a penalty, though, as it's a timeout taken by Childress. As the Bobcats want to talk things over, gives us a chance to catch our breath as well. You're listening to Abernathy Football with the Antelopes leading 7 to nothing here late in the first. The Abernathy community has trusted Abel Funeral Home and Flower Shop since 1991. Todd and his team bless many families by assisting them with funeral planning and services while Carly and her crew at the flower shop have you covered with flowers, gifts, registries, and so much more. Both are locally owned and operated and are proud supporters of the Antelopes and Lady Lopes. If Abel's Funeral Home or Flower Shop can serve you in any way, give us a call today or come see us near the corner of 16th Street and Avenue D in Abernathy. At Abel's Funeral Home and Flower Shop, we are cheering the Antelopes and Lady Lopes on to victory this season. Welcome back here to the broadcast as a handoff goes up the middle as we welcome you back here into Fair Park Stadium. Childress with the ball moving right to left as we welcome you back to the broadcast here. 25-yard line, that's a gain of about three, almost four. It'll be second down and six coming up here for Childress.
In the shotgun is Rabe. A couple receivers spread far to the left side for the Bobcats. There's the snap. And that's the play that Childress fumbled on early, but this time they do not. The pitch goes to Logan Oldham, number 22. The Antelope defense there, though, after a very short gain for Oldham, as about three white jerseys in the middle of the field make the stop near the line of scrimmage. And uh, did we have another flag on the play? It would appear so. We've got a personal foul against Abernathy. A face mask here against the Antelopes. And that's going to give Childress a free first down. Another penalty flag against Abernathy. It's first down and 10 for the Bobcats. In the shotgun, there's the snap. Rabe looking to throw under pressure now. Flag flies in the backfield, and Rabe's going to be dropped back at the 25-yard line as the antelope pressure gets to him. Let's check the penalty, though, as the flag flies in the children's backfield just before the sack was made. As I believe it's probably going to be a hold against Childress because the White Hat's looking over to the Antelope sideline. It's going to be a hold against the Bobcats. Abernathy going to decline that penalty because their sack netted them about a... 12-yard loss on the play, and so that's a no-brainer for Coach Wiley to decline the penalty over there on the sideline and a big sack for the Antelopes. It will be second down and long. And that's going to back the Bobcats up, a loss of 12, and it will be second down and 22 for Childress. As again, Rabe is in the shotgun, a golden chance here. For the Antelope defense, get off the field. Rabe looking to throw. The pass is caught on a little quick slant. Number 80 hauls it in. That's Cash Hightower. But he's brought down pretty quick after the catch is made. And that's going to bring up a third and long here for Childress. As third down and 10 coming up here for the Bobcats. Big chance here for the Antelope defense to get off the field again. Third down and 10 in the shotgun is Ray. Maybe a throwing down. It is not going down. It is fakes the handoff. Now Ray being chased in the pocket. He's scrambling to the near side. He tries to get to the sideline. He is hit right as he goes out of bounds. Is number 12 in pursuit defensively. That is Lance Ponciano for the Antelope defense after a gain of about five. On the QB scramble by Rabe, and it's going to be fourth down here for the Childress Bobcats. Let's see if they, probably a punting situation, but you always got to be a little bit leery of something tricky or a fake here near midfield. Abernathy does has, have a man back deep as it's another defensive stand for Abernathy as it sets right now. Fourth down and six. The Bobcats are going to punt it away. It's an end-over-end -end short punt that is going to bounce at the 30 and go out of bounds. So another nice defensive stop for the Abernathy Antelopes. Defensive stands on the broadcast are brought to you by the South Plains Auto Ranch as Abernathy getting a plethora of those defensive stops here early, and it is going to be first down and 10 here for the Antelopes as they're going to take over from the 29-yard line is where they're going to say it finally bounced out of bounds. So 71 yards of real estate here in front of the Antelopes. As in the shotgun is Trejo. Trejo takes the snap, handoff goes underneath for a short game as number 61 for the Childress Bobcats. That's Cade Jenkins coming up near the line of scrimmage to make the stop there for Childress. And it'll be second down and 10 coming up. No gain for the Antelopes on that one. Second down and 10 as Trejo is again in the shotgun here for the Antelopes. Trejo's going to take the snap. He's going to hand the ball off. 
as Carrillo's going to try and get the corner again. Left side, Carrillo out across the 35 as he's going to be short of the first down, but a healthy gain there for Carrillo on second down. A gain of about eight yards around that left edge brings up a very manageable third down and two situation here for the Antelopes. Third down and two is Abernathy. Going to try and keep this drive alive. Third and two, big plays. Trejo again in the gun, takes the snap, hands it off. It's Macias up the middle. He dives forward near the 40. It'll depend on the spot. I don't think he quite got there. As I think Macias is about a half a yard short of the first down. And it's decision time for Abernathy. Fourth down and short on their own side of the field, though, at the 40. Leading 7 to nothing here late in the first quarter. Do the Antelopes gamble or do they trust their defense, which has played pretty well so far here tonight? Fourth down in inches, it looks like the offense is going to stay out there here for Coach Wiley and the Abernathy Antelopes. A little bit of gambling early. Fourth down in inches as the clock is going to run down. There's only about 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. As in the shotgun, Trejo takes the snap, handoff goes. It's going to be a first down run. It is not a big gain, but you didn't need much at all in the fourth down conversion for the Abernathy Antelopes right in the middle of the field, and that may take us to the end of the quarter. We'll see if the Antelopes get off another snap or, snap or not. Uh, first downs on our broadcast brought to you by Nutrien Ag Solutions. As the Antelopes move the chains again. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter tonight from Fair Park Stadium in Childress. As the Abernathy Antelopes on the road, a 7 to nothing lead after 12 minutes here in the season opener. We'll take a quick timeout and come back. You're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football. If you are in need of a cool down, you need to give your friends at JC Refrigeration Cooling and Heating a call. As a South Plains leader in heating and air conditioning services, we can handle all of your needs, big or small. We specialize in residential, light commercial, and mobile home services. Give us a call today at 806-744-9855 or come see us at 1606 North University Avenue in Lubbock. JC Refrigeration, Cooling and Heating is a proud supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. And once again, good evening and welcome back here to Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. As Abernathy Antelope football on the air for the first time in 2023, thanks to St. Clair and Massey Orthodontics along with Lambert Insurance, the Junk and Farmer's Market, Nana's Donuts, Vista Bank, Web Vision Center, and the Abernathy Little League, all proud supporters of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes, some of the many sponsors who help make these broadcasts possible. Trejo on first down and 10 to begin the second quarter, hands the ball off up the middle. As it is Macias, the ball carrier, he... Put his head down and got about two. It'll be second down and eight coming up here for the Antelopes. Again, they move it out near midfield. Abernathy moving it right to left here on your internet dial. In the shotgun is Trejo. He takes the snap. Another handoff to Monkey. Monkey this time sees a hole, and he kind of bounces around, finally gets through it, jabs forward near midfield. Credit Macias that time as it looked like he had nowhere to go, and he turned it into about a three-yard run to bring up a manageable third down and five here for the Abernathy Antelopes. Again, we talked in the pregame about how we thought ball control for Abernathy might be a key tonight. This is one of those situations you'd like to keep this drive going and chew up some clock. Trejo in the shotgun, under 11 to play now in the first half of the ball game. As low snap, Trejo goes to get it, hands the ball off. Macias spins through a couple of would-be tacklers into Childress territory down to the 49-yard line. 
He's going to get about three yards, maybe four on the carry again. He is just short of a first down as Atlan Macias in another fourth down and short situation here for the Antelopes. They converted on fourth and inches uh, just a couple of minutes ago late in the opening quarter. Offense once again staying on the field. On fourth down, Trejo is in the gun, takes the snap. Another handoff up the middle, and it'll depend on the spot. I think Macias got just enough as he reaches the ball out, and that's going to be a first down run for the Abernathy Antelopes. A Nutrient Ag Solutions first down is going to once again keep this drive alive for Abernathy on fourth down. As the Antelopes take it inside the 50 down to the 40. Eight-yard line ball pretty much directly right in the middle of the field in the teeth of that Childress C. 9.55 and counting left to play here in the first half from Childress. Trejo is in the gun. One receiver on each side, and that's kind of a busted play, a low snap. Trejo was lucky to go down and get it, and now Childress is saying the ball came out. They're saying they have the football, and Alan Macias a little bit slow to get up as a late flag comes in. There's going to be a lot to sort out here, and they haven't said who has the football yet either. As a flag comes in well after the play, Childress is saying they came out of the bottom of the pile with the football. If so, that would be Abernathy's first turnover of the season, but there has been no indication of anything by this officiating crew yet. As it was kind of a busted play from the beginning. It was a low snap that Trejo kind of bobbled near the ground, and then he got it to Macias, who just kind of dove forward. And what do we have here? Let's check it out. We've got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Childress. So I don't think that there is a turnover on the play. It doesn't appear so. And in fact, as late as that flag came out, I'm wondering if something wasn't said or directed to Macias, who was a little slow to get up and then jogging off the field late. Again, don't know that. That's pure speculation. That's a 15-yard penalty that extends this drive for Abernathy and moves it all the way down inside the 35-yard line to the 33. A big break there for the Antelopes. An unsportsmanlike conduct flag against the Bobcats. Another low snap that Trejo has a hard time handling and flags fly in the Antelope backfield. This one may be a hold against the Antelopes. Lots of penalties here in the first half both ways. Lots of early season mistakes for these teams as one might would expect but this is going to be a hold on Abernathy and Childers going to go ahead and take this penalty and mark off the 10 yards so first down and 10 will become first down and 20 here for the Abernathy Antelopes lots of early season mistakes and penalties being made here in the first half of this one you might would expect that. And it's first down and long for the Antelopes. As Trejo is in the gun, man in motion. As Tre Trejo takes the snap, looking to throw. Airs it out deep down the sideline. Man coverage! It is caught inside the 10-yard line. And that is the first completion of the varsity career for Elijah Trejo. And it's a big one down the Antelope sideline. As hauling it in down there for Abernathy is Rolando Martinez, number 22. And it is going to, but there's a flag on the play. Is that one going to come back? I'm afraid it might here. I didn't see it, but deep in the backfield, there's a flag on the play. And Abernathy going to be whistled for a hold. What a blow there is Roland, as, uh, Rolando Martinez caught one over the shoulder down inside the 10 yard line. A perfectly placed ball for Elijah Trejo, but it's coming back. A holding penalty against the Abernathy Antelopes, and that's a huge shot to the Antelope drive right there. That was almost uh, the first completed pass of the season for Elijah Trejo. Completed passes this year 
uh, sponsored on our broadcast by Reb Lopez with Exit Realty. And uh, almost a spectacular one right there. But instead, a 10-yard penalty. And now you go from first down in goal to first down in 30 as rolling to the near side. Looking to throw Trejo in the flats. It's complete to the 45-yard line, spinning free. Now the ball is on the ground. Abernathy may have fumbled it right back to Childress. Let's check who's got it on the bottom of the pile as the catch was made by Brody Shadden, number one. He was fighting for extra yards, and I think he coughed it up. And that is going to be the first turnover of the season following that completed pass to Shad, and again, completed passes on our broadcast brought to you by Reb Lopez with Exit Realty, but then a fumble at the end of the play as Shadden was fighting for extra yards and able to come up with it is the Childress defense as they get their first forced turnover of the night and first turnover of the season, and Childress will take over first down and 10 as the Bobcats will have it from the 47-yard line. In the shotgun, there's movement up front, but I think Childress may have flinched to try and draw Abernathy off there with them blowing it dead. It is going to be a false start penalty here against the Bobcats. 8.45 left to play here in the opening quarter as Abernathy continues to lead 7 to nothing. The only scoring tonight, a... 40-yard touchdown run by Levi Carrillo on Abernathy's first offensive snap of the season. Other than that, it's been penalties and defense tonight from Fair Park Stadium. In the shotgun formation with trips to the far side for Raves, screen pass over to the far side. Good coverage there defensively by Abernathy. It's going to go for a very short gain as getting up off the bottom of the antelope pile defensively, big number 66. That is Jackson Arrington in on the stop, among others there for the antelopes. And it's going to be second down and long coming up here for the Bobcats. 8.20 and counting left here in the first half from Fair Park in Childress, Texas. You know, Rabe is in the gun. Rabe takes the snap looking to throw. Steps up in the pocket, fires, has a man. It's inside the 40, and it is caught as in coverage that time was Levi Carrillo, but uh, having a step on the defender was Isaiah Halomo, and that's going to be a first down for the Bobcats. A nice gain for Childress. They hurry it up to the line as they want to speed things up a little bit. In the gun again, there's the snap, and, oh, that's a busted play as that time Ray looked to hand it off, and there was nobody there to hand it to in the Childress backfield as the back had gone the other way. That's a miscommunication, and Childress lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage there. No gain, and it will be second down and 10 here for the Bobcats. Again, no huddle, looking to throw. Rabe has a wide open receiver. There's a breakdown in coverage for Abernathy right near the first down marker. Abernathy does a pretty good job recovering defensively is number 25 for the Abernathy Antelopes. That's Caleb Brown makes the stop about a yard short of the first down marker. And it is going to be third down and a yard here. Third down and one, probably two down territory for the Bobcats as they've marched it inside the Antelope 30 down to the 26. As we go down inside of seven minutes to play here tonight in the first half of the ball game. Abernathy continuing to lead 7-0 on third down and one in the shotgun. There's the snap. Handoff goes up the middle, and the Antelopes initially have him in the backfield trying to stay with Mathis, and they do. The Antelope defense throw Darion Mathis for a loss as you've got number 22 and number 21, Macias and Martinez in on the stop there for the Antelopes. How about that on third um, third down and one? It goes for a loss of the on the play of about six yards as Mathis was trying to bounce it outside and keep it alive. But in doing so, the Antelope defense able to stay with him and drop him for a loss. And it's fourth down and eight now 
for the Antelope defense as they try and get off the field again. Here is Rabe in the shotgun trips with three receivers to the left. Rabe looks right, though. He has a receiver to the 25-yard line, and it's going to be real close as I think it's going to be a first down grab over there on the sideline. And that's a heads-up play by Childress. They knew where the marker was, and it's going to be first down and 10, a big conversion on fourth down. Another handoff goes up the middle here to Darion Mathis as Mathis takes it down to the 20. And a gain of about five yards on first down. No huddle, second down and five. Rabe looking to throw. He scrambles in the pocket. Now he's being chased, and Rabe is going to be dropped in the backfield as a big-time sack by Monkey. Allen Macias comes up with a big defensive sack in the backfield. His second of the night. He's playing big on both sides of the ball tonight for the Antelopes, and that's a big loss on the play as that's back outside the 30 at the 31-yard line, and it's third down and about 15 now here for the Bobcats. Again, no huddle to the line. Rabe is in the gun. He swings it out to the near side. Mathis tries to let the athlete make a play, and Abernathy does a pretty good job staying home defensively there. Number four, Carson Curry comes up to make the stop, and it's another fourth down facing the Childress Bobcats here. As fourth and long again, they converted one a moment ago. That one was about fourth and eight. As this one going to be about fourth down and almost 12 for the Bobcats. As they've got to get it inside the 15-yard line to move the sticks. Big spot here late in the first half for both the Antelope defense and the Childress offense. 431 left to play until halftime. Abernathy. Leading defense has played well tonight so far in the season opener for the Lopes. 431 left here until halftime. A big fourth down as Childress slows it down a little bit there. Going to huddle it up and talk about this one. Fourth down and 11. Is in the gun is Ray. Receiver stacked to the short side of the field. Ray being chased. Flags fly. This may be a hold. It's thrown up. It's going to be intercepted. It's not going to be intercepted as it was almost picked off by number five, Maverick Shadden. But it falls down incomplete. I think it was going to be a holding penalty against Childress anyway. Decline that baby, and it's going to be a defensive stop for the Abernathy Antelopes on fourth down. As defensive stops brought to you by the South Plains Auto Ranch here in 2023. And Childress sniffs the red zone, but the Antelope defense stands tall and gets a big stop on that end of the field with 424 left here in the first half. And Abernathy will continue to lead 7 to nothing. We do have a timeout. We will keep it right here. as the Antelopes and the Bobcats go toe-to-toe -to -toe here tonight from the historic Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. It's the season opener. The Abernathy Antelopes, though, making one of their longer road trips of the season. They do have a trip uh, later in the year where they go to Stanton. That's a district ball game. That'll be a good little haul as well for the Antelopes. But Abernathy thus far here through the majority of the first half faring fairly well. As you knew, coming on the road, A, you're coming to a tough place to play in Childress. Number two, you're playing a good ball club in Childress. But with it being the season opener for both teams, you just really don't know what to expect. And uh, Abernathy's had a pleasant showing from that defense here tonight. That coupled with a big offensive run by Levi Carrillo has Abernathy a 7 to nothing lead. as the Antelopes are going to take over at their own 26-yard line. Man, wouldn't you like about a 4-minute and 20-second scoring drive here heading into the locker room? That would be just what the doctor ordered for the Antelopes. In the shotgun is Trejo. Trejo takes the snap. He hands the ball off, trying to find space up the middle as it went to number 12, Lance Ponciano. And Ponciano got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was about it. And it will be second down and 10 
coming up here for the Antelopes. But that'll tick us down under four minutes to play here in the second quarter. Abernathy continues to lead seven to nothing here on the road tonight at Fair Park. In the shotgun is Trejo. Trejo hands the ball off again right side, this time getting the edge. Again, it's number 12, Lance Ponciano out across the 30, close to the 35-yard line. And that is going to be about a yard and a half, maybe two, short of a first down. And it's going to be a big third down coming up here for the Antelopes. Third down, a long two, facing the Abernathy offense. With 3.25 to go in the first half. In the shotgun is Trejo. Trejo takes the snap, hands the ball off up the middle, spinning in traffic again is Ponciano. He's close to a first down, and I think, based on the spot by the official on the far side, he's got it. As Ponciano kind of spun through a couple of would-be Childress tacklers and picks up the first down. First downs on the broadcast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions here in 2023 for the Abernathy Antelopes. As we tick under three minutes to play now in the second quarter, Abernathy continues to hold a touchdown advantage. Trejo is in the shotgun, takes the snap, hands it off to Macias this time as Macias tries to get the edge, but he's not going to. A host of Childress defenders there to make the tackle, and that's some Hard-nosed defense there on the side of Childress. A loss of one for Monkey. And it will be second down. Second down and 11 from the 35-yard line facing the Antelopes, their own side of the field. 220 left to play here in the first half. Trejo takes the snap, hands it off. Macias near side again. Fighting through that offensive line, this time for Childress. It's number 11, Scout Smith. Smith, six foot, 205 pounds, used every ounce of that to battle through that offensive line of the Antelopes and make the tackle right near the line of scrimmage. And it will be third down and 11. Third and 11 with 151 left here in the opening half tonight from Childress. As Abernathy, if nothing else, even if you don't score here, would love to see Abernathy keep the ball into the locker room. You would take a 7-0 lead into the half. As looking to throw, stepping up in the pocket, being chased, is Trejo. Now he's going to run with it, and he's going to step out of bounds. That should be almost as bang-bang play on the sideline. Childers probably lucky a late hit flag doesn't fly, but... As stepping out of bounds is Trejo, well short of a first down at the 39-yard line. And it will be fourth down and seven. Punting situation for sure here for the Antelopes. You let that clock, well, it's not running because you were out of bounds. So it'll, it'll get Childress the ball with a little over 60 seconds to work with here heading into the locker room. As Isaiah Halomo goes back deep to return the punt, here for the Antelopes. See if Abernathy can get off a good kick. It's a high snap, but going up to get it and getting away a pretty good end-over-end -end kick and then taking an Antelope bounce as Brody Shadden, a nice punt that's going to pin Childress back inside their own 20 as it's going to roll all the way down to the 15-yard line. There's a nice-looking punt there by Brody Shadden. As uh, kickoffs, extra points, punts, all the uh, special teams this year brought to you by the First State Bank right there in Abernathy. Go see them for all of your banking needs. And that was a good-looking punt there by Brody Shadden as it goes back inside the 15-yard line. So that'll give Childers about a minute 10 to work with, and they've got 85 yards of real estate in front of them. As the Abernathy Antelopes look to maintain this touchdown advent advantage heading into the locker room. Again, glad you're with us tonight on the broadcast. Rabe is in the gun for Childress, an empty backfield. 
He's looking to throw. He's going to air it out in man coverage. He's got a man, but good recovery defensively is getting back there is number 11, Aaron Russum, as he got in near midfield for the Antelopes and broke it up. As that's looked like that uh, the receiver had a step on Russum, but the ball held up just long enough, and it was a little underthrown. That allowed Russum to recover, and he made a nice defensive play. Incomplete pass. It'll be second down and 10 coming up here for the Bobcats. 103 left to play until halftime. Again, Rabe is in the gun. Drake Rabe looking to throw, dances around. He's got time. He throws it, almost picked off, batted around, and it finally falls incomplete. I think both defender and offender got a hand on it near midfield before it harmlessly falls to the turf as Defensively for Abernathy, there Austin Fisher had a good play on the ball, is almost able to come up with a big pick right there, but it's nonetheless an incomplete pass. Third down and 10 coming up for the Bobcats. 53 seconds left here in the first half of the ball game as we near 8 o'clock here at Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. In the shotgun. Again, is Drake Rabe. He's going to take the snap, hands the ball off. Mathis coming to the near side. Levi Carrillo stretches with Mathis. Abernathy defensively has done a good job containing the athletic Darion Mathis here tonight. And Abernathy may take a timeout here. They want the ball back because it's going to be a punting situation for the Childress Bobcats. Another defensive stand brought to you by the South Plains Auto Ranch. And Abernathy, they've got an opportunity here to get pretty good field position, and maybe they can find a way to put some points on the board before halftime as the Antelopes do take the timeout. Get another warm day here in the West Texas, Texas Panhandle region. Another one out near 100 degrees, but it's cooling off a little bit and turned into a nice evening for season opening football on the final Friday in August. Here for the Abernathy Antelopes. As thankful for all of our sponsors on the broadcast, including St. Clair and Massey Orthodontics, Lambert Insurance, the Junk and Farmers Market, Nana's Donuts, Vista Bank, Web Vision Center in Plainview, and the Abernathy Little League. All proud supporters of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. Forty-six seconds left to play here in the first half tonight from Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. If you would have told me coming in, Abernathy would hold a 7-0 advantage late in the first half, I would have taken it to the cleaners. Fourth down and long from their own end of the field, Childress punting back deep for the Antelopes to return it is Rolando Martinez. It's a low snap. Childress does get it away, though. Martinez to catch it, and he does so at the 46. He runs it back inside the 40. You're right at the 40, and then it's a nice open field tackle made there by Childress, number 25 for the Bobcats. That is Cashton Patterson, and it'll be an opportunity here for the Antelopes. Final 37 seconds left here in the first half of the ball game. Abernathy leading 7 to nothing, and they're going to get the ball with about 40 yards of real estate in front of them. A big end of the half, really, for both of these teams, defensively for Childress, offensively for the Antelopes. In the gun is Trejo, empty backfield, looking to throw, steps into it. He's got a receiver over the middle. It is caught inside the 10-yard line, and it's going to be first down and goal for the Abernathy Antelopes. As splitting the middle of the field is number seven, Levi Carrillo. He hauls in the reception for an Abernathy first down as first down is brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. And uh, in the gun, Trejo takes the snap and he kills it with 22 seconds to go. And that's another completed pass as well brought to you by Reb Lopez with Exit Realty. And that's a 
Big one right there. Second down and goal now for the Antelopes is running up quickly as Abernathy out of timeouts. Trejo alertly killed it. And I like the touch that Trejo's put on the ball here on the few times he's put it in the air early for the Abernathy Antelopes. A golden opportunity here, though. Second goal from inside the five. You are out of timeouts, though, I think. As we do have a timeout on the field taken by Childress, though. And we'll go ahead and keep it right here because we don't want you to miss anything here in the final 22 seconds of the first half. But let's see, on that last reception by Levi Carrillo, that was about a gain of 38 yards on the reception for Carrillo. Carrillo's got a big first half in the ball game as he also has the 40-yard touchdown run for the Antelope to his credit. But it is second down and goal to go here for the Antelopes. A chance to take a two-score lead into the locker room at halftime on the ro road at Fair Park Stadium here in Childress. Ball spotted on the right hash mark at about the two-yard line. Here for the Antelope, 22 seconds left on the clock. As Trejo in the gun, a receiver spread to each sideline. Handoff coming to the near side, trying to get free. Macias and Monkey does not get to the goal line, but a flag flies. We'll check the penalty, 14 seconds showing on the clock. Monkey was fighting for the goal line. He did not get there. Let's check the penalty flag, though. It was right at near the tackle. As the officiating crew talking about it here near the goal line. As the official going to be talking to the Childress head coach, Bo Helm, Helm in his second year leading this Bobcat program. That makes you think it's probably a flag here against the Antelopes. Now Abernathy walking in the wrong direction. It's maybe a hold. No, they're going to actually call a block in the back, not a hold here against the Abernathy Antelopes. That's going to be the flag, and so that makes it a little tougher here on the Abernathy Antelopes as we've got our final timeout taken of the first half. It'll be second and goal, but that's going to move the ball back outside the 10-yard line as that moves it all the way back to about the 13-yard line. Again, just 14 seconds left here until halftime. Glad you're with us tonight on the broadcast. It's been a fun one so far. There have been some uh, self-inflicted wounds on both sides as both teams have been penalized quite a bit here in the first half. Um, both teams have turned the ball over once. Some things you would probably expect in the season opener. But all in all, if you would have told me we could have taken a lead into the locker room, I would have taken it. But, man, I'd love to add to that lead right here. Second down and goal from about the 13-yard line. In the shotgun is Trejo. He takes the snap, empty backfield, looking to throw, scrambles right. He's got a lot of room to run. He's going to pass it to the back of the end zone. Did he get a foot down? He did not. Back there in the back of the end zone, Getting free was the receiver. It was number 11, Aaron Russum, but he couldn't keep a foot in bounds on that back line. And with five seconds to go, it is third down and goal from the 12 coming up here for the Antelopes. That was oh so close, but didn't quite make it. And now Abernathy going to try a field goal 
as this would be a 29-yard try as Abernathy trying to take a 10-point lead into the locker room off the foot of Rolando Martinez. A 22-yard field goal try, but before he kicks it, we've got a timeout taken on the field as Childress takes their final timeout of the first half. Is that their version of ice the kicker, if you will? And we've got one more stoppage here before we head into the locker room. And it'll be a 29-yard field goal try when we come back off the foot of Rolando Martinez. Abernathy, they scored on their first offensive snap of the ball game tonight, and they're trying to add three more on the final snap here of the first half of the ball game. Seven to nothing, the Antelope lead. How about that Antelope defense also pitching a shutout? of the Bobcats here in the first half. As again, both teams making their way. Both teams have exhausted their timeouts now, and so you would expect, barring a penalty, this to be the final snap of the first half. As a 29-yard field goal try, well, no, now the offense is back out there. With five seconds to go, scrap that. Trejo is back on the field at quarterback for the Antelopes. Out of the timeout, there's the snap. There's a reverse, trying to get free, throwing it to the end zone. It hits the defender in the back as time runs out as Rolando Martinez ended up being the one that threw the ball as it was a little bit of reverse action, and then Martinez was looking to throw it on the trick play. He had a receiver. But the line drive throw hit a Childress defender in the back, and the Childress Bobcats dodge a bullet heading into the locker room as the Antelopes do not score. So the Abernathy Antelopes will have to settle for a 7 to nothing lead after 24 minutes of play here tonight from Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. I tell you what, we're going to take a little bit of an extended timeout here on the broadcast, we're going to catch our breath, and we will come back with um, some scores from around the area. We'll recap the first half a little bit as well. But tonight, you're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football um, on the Abernathy Antelope Sports Network here at the half from Childress. The Antelope 7 and the Bobcats nothing. One of Abernathy's longest standing businesses is First State Bank. People have been choosing First State Bank for all of their financial and banking needs since 1909. We are proud to be locally owned and operated, and we have three locations across the area to serve you. Abernathy's First State Bank is a longtime supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes and wish them the best of luck this season. If we can serve you in any way, drop by and see us at 402 9th Street in Abernathy or give us a call at 806 806- 298-2556. The Abernathy community has trusted Abel Funeral Home and Flower Shop since 1991. Todd and his team bless many families by assisting them with funeral planning and services, while Carly and her crew at the Flower Shop have you covered with flowers, gifts, registries, and so much more. Both are locally owned and operated and are proud supporters of the Antelopes and Lady Lopes. If Abel's Funeral Home or Flower Shop can serve you in any way, give us a call today or come see us near the corner of 16th Street and Avenue D in Abernathy. At Abel's Funeral Home and Flower Shop, we are cheering the Antelopes and Lady Lopes on to victory this season. The Abernathy Independent School District is the heartbeat of our community. As a TEA recognized district, our students excel at the highest level on the field, in the classroom, in FFA and 4-H activities, band, and so much more. Abernathy ISD offers a variety of college level and dual credit courses to prepare our students for the future. We are proud of our students and wishing them the best of luck this season in all that they do. At Abernathy ISD, we are students today, leaders tomorrow, and antelopes forever. 
At Abernathy's First Baptist Church, our mission is to love God, love people, and to tell the world. Our pastor is Damon Pierce, and we meet for Sunday school at 930 and worship at 1045. We offer a number of kids and youth activities, as well as a Wednesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. We'd love to welcome you and your family to Abernathy's First Baptist Church. If you have any questions about our church, feel free to give us a call at 806 298 2587. We are proud of our community and our young people, and we wish the Lopes and Lady Lopes the best of luck this school year. You don't have to travel across the state to find a used car. South Plains Auto Ranch, right here in Abernathy, has you covered. Austin and his team are ready to go to work for you to get you in your new ride. With in house financing available, South Plains Auto Ranch is a win win situation. Come see us today on South Avenue D in Abernathy or give us a call at 806-298-2200. We are behind the Lopes and the Lady Lopes this season. If you are in need of a cool down, you need to give your friends at JC Refrigeration Cooling and Heating a call. As a South Plains leader in heating and air conditioning services, we can handle all of your needs, big or small. We specialize in residential, light commercial, and mobile home services. Give us a call today at 806-744-9855 or come see us at 1606 North University Avenue in Lubbock. JC Refrigeration Cooling and Heating is a proud supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. St. Isidore Catholic Church has long been a staple in the Abernathy community and is a proud supporter of our young people. Led by Father Brian, we offer Mass daily at 8.30 a.m. and on Sundays at 9 a.m. with adoration on the first Friday of each month at 7 p.m. At St. Isidore Catholic Church, we are praying blessings over our students for a great school year and are wishing the Lopes and Lady Lopes the best of luck this season. If you have any questions about our church, give us a call at 806-298-4278. For over 100 years, Plains Land Bank has specialized in financing rural property. We are passionate about agriculture and ensuring that producers are successful. Your land is more than just your livelihood, it's your legacy, and we want you to see it grow for generations to come. Let us help you own a piece of Texas. Come visit our Plainview office today or give us a call at 806-296-5579. At Plains Land Bank, we are a proud supporter of our West Texas high school student athletes. As a leader in the agriculture industry, Nutrient Ag Solutions is committed to helping West Texas growers reach their greatest potential. The professionals at Nutrient Ag Solutions pride themselves as being known as the ag retailer of the future with their focus on customer service. An emphasis is consistently placed on providing the best performing chemical, fertilizer, and seed products. Financing programs and second to none technology used in crop consulting and field application for their customers. With six retail locations located nearby, they are equipped with the experienced agronomists that are able to work alongside you to create the ideal plan for your operation. David Carver and his crew would like to say thank you for those that have entrusted them for years to service their needs and would also like to wish the Antelopes a successful and blessed year. DB Media specializes in all things audio, video, and lighting. From designs and installs tailored to your commercial application, to concerts and corporate events, and even studio recording and mixing for bands and artists, DB Media has you covered. DB Media is a proud supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes this season. Your local leader in real estate is Ty Horsford with Movements Real Estate. In today's real estate market, you need someone you can trust, and that person is Ty Horsford. Whether you're looking to buy, sell, or invest, Ty has the knowledge to guide you in the right direction. I'm proud to support the Lopes and Lady Lopes and pray that you have a wonderful and successful school year.
your local leader in real estate. One of Abernathy's longest standing businesses is First State Bank. People have been choosing First State Bank for all of their financial and banking needs since 1909. We are proud to be locally owned and operated, and we have three locations across the area to serve you. Abernathy's First State Bank is a longtime supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes and wish them the best of luck this season. If we can serve you in any way, drop by and see us at 402 9th Street in Abernathy or give us a call at 806 298 2556. The Abernathy community has trusted Abel Funeral Home and Flower Shop since 1991. Todd and his team bless many families by assisting them with funeral planning and services, while Carly and her crew at the Flower Shop have you covered with flowers, gifts, registries, and so much more. Both are locally owned and operated and are proud supporters of the Antelopes and Lady Lopes. If Abel's Funeral Home or Flower Shop can serve you in any way, give us a call today or come see us near the corner of 16th Street and Avenue D in Abernathy. At Abel's Funeral Home and Flower Shop, we are cheering the Antelopes and Lady Lopes on to victory this season. The Abernathy Independent School District is the heartbeat of our community. As a TEA recognized district, our students excel at the highest level on the field, in the classroom, in FFA and 4-H activities, band, and so much more. Abernathy ISD offers a variety of college level and dual credit courses to prepare our students for the future. We are proud of our students and wishing them the best of luck this season in all that they do. At Abernathy ISD, we are students today, leaders tomorrow, and antelopes forever. At Abernathy's First Baptist Church, our mission is to love God, love people, and to tell the world. Our pastor is Damon Pierce, and we meet for Sunday school at 930 and worship at 1045. We offer a number of kids and youth activities, as well as a Wednesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. We'd love to welcome you and your family to Abernathy's First Baptist Church. If you have any questions about our church, feel free to give us a call at 806 298 2587. We are proud of our community and our young people, and we wish the Lopes and Lady Lopes the best of luck this school year. You don't have to travel across the state to find a used car. South Plains Auto Ranch, right here in Abernathy, has you covered. Austin and his team are ready to go to work for you to get you in your new ride. With in house financing available, South Plains Auto Ranch is a win win situation. Come see us today on South Avenue D in Abernathy or give us a call at 806-298-2200. We are behind the Lopes and the Lady Lopes this season. If you are in need of a cool down, you need to give your friends at JC Refrigeration Cooling and Heating a call. As a South Plains leader in heating and air conditioning services, we can handle all of your needs, big or small. We specialize in residential, light commercial, and mobile home services. Give us a call today at 806-744-9855 or come see us at 1606 North University Avenue in Lubbock. JC Refrigeration Cooling and Heating is a proud supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. St. Isidore Catholic Church has long been a staple in the Abernathy community and is a proud supporter of our young people. Led by Father Brian, we offer Mass daily at 8.30 a.m. and on Sundays at 9 a.m. with adoration on the first Friday of each month at 7 p.m. At St. Isidore Catholic Church, we are praying blessings over our students for a great school year and are wishing the Lopes and Lady Lopes the best of luck this season. If you have any questions about our church, give us a call at 806-298-4278. For over 100 years, Plains Land Bank has specialized in financing rural property. We are passionate about agriculture and ensuring that producers are successful. Your land is more than just your livelihood, it's your legacy, and we want you to see it grow for generations to come. Let us help you own a piece of Texas. Come visit our Plainview office today or give us a call at 806-296-5579. At Plains Land Bank, we are a proud supporter of our West Texas high school student-athletes. 
As a leader in the agriculture industry, Nutrient Ag Solutions is committed to helping West Texas growers reach their greatest potential. The professionals at Nutrient Ag Solutions pride themselves as being known as the ag retailer of the future with their focus on customer service. An emphasis is consistently placed on providing the best performing chemical, fertilizer, and seed products. Financing programs and second to none technology used in crop consulting and field application for their customers. With six retail locations located nearby, they are equipped with the experienced agronomists that are able to work alongside you to create the ideal plan for your operation. David Carver and his crew would like to say thank you for those that have entrusted them for years to service their needs and would also like to wish the Antelopes a successful and blessed year. DB Media specializes in all things audio, video, and lighting. From designs and installs tailored to your commercial application, to concerts and corporate events, and even studio recording and mixing for bands and artists, DB Media has you covered. DB Media is a proud supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes this season. Your local leader in real estate is Ty Horsford with Movements Real Estate. In today's real estate market, you need someone you can trust, and that person is Ty Horsford. Whether you're looking to buy, sell, or invest, Ty has the knowledge to guide you in the right direction. I'm proud to support the Lopes and Lady Lopes and pray that you have a wonderful and successful school year. And once again, good evening, Abernathy, Texas, and good evening, fans of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes, as we welcome you back here inside Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas, the site of tonight's season opener for the Abernathy Antelopes. We are currently at halftime as the Abernathy Antelopes hold a 7 to nothing advantage on the home team, the Childress Bobcats, here tonight. Glad you're with us on the broadcast, and won't take us long to tell you how the scoring happened in the first 24 minutes. After Abernathy's defense got a defensive stop on the first drive of the game for the Childress offense, Dane Provost recovering a fumble, giving Abernathy the football at the Childress 40. It was on the first offensive snap of the season for the Abernathy Antelopes. A sweep left for Levi Carrillo as Carrillo got the edge and scampered 40 yards to pay dirt. Uh, PAT was good. Abernathy led seven to nothing. Uh, three minutes into the ball game, and uh, for the next 21 minutes, that is where we would stay as Abernathy threatening right there in the waning seconds of the first half, but is unable to get into the end zone or get on the scoreboard. And so Abernathy settles for a seven to nothing lead here at the half. Is a few numbers to give you here at halftime is Elijah Trejo and his. First varsity start um, for the Abernathy Antelopes, one for three through the air, 38 yards. Uh, he had a couple of completions that were negated uh, due to a penalty. You've got Carrillo. He's been in the action, two rushes for 48 yards and a touchdown. Also uh, a reception for 38 yards. That, that was the one late in the half that set up a good scoring opportunity for the Antelopes that they were not able to get in. And then we talked about Alan Macias uh, in the pregame. Didn't know how much he would play tonight. He's nursing a sore hip, uh, but Macias, 11 carries and 31 yards for the Abernathy Antelopes in the ball game. But nonetheless, glad to have you with us here on the broadcast as the Abernathy Antelopes do lead this one 7 to nothing here at halftime as the Antelopes and the Bobcats getting ready to come out for the second half here in just a few minutes. Thankful for all of our sponsors this year on the broadcast. Would love to recognize some of those here at the half as well as Nutrient Ag Solutions uh, sponsoring all of our first downs here in 2023, while the First Baptist Church uh, sponsoring all of our touchdowns. Hope to have a lot of those this season as well. Uh, South Plains Auto Ranch. Go see Austin and his team uh, there in Abernathy for all of your used car needs. Uh, sponsoring defensive stops and stands 
on the season, a, a plethora of those in the first half for the um, Abernathy Antelopes. Kickoff, extra points, field goals, all the positive special teams happenings uh, this year brought to you by uh, First State Bank uh, in Abernathy and then Reb Lopez with Exit Realty, a proud supporter of the Antelopes and Lady Lopes as well. She is our pregame and halftime show sponsor along with completed catches here in 2023. So glad to have all of those sponsors on board with us here this season. The other ones you hear throughout our broadcast as well, we could not do it uh, without um, all of our sponsors here on the broadcast. About a minute and a half left here before we kick things off in the second half. Both teams just about to make their way back out onto the field as the Abernathy Antelopes running through a brand new tunnel. Um, it's, the, it's the little things, right? It's a, a new tunnel uh, that the Abernathy Antelopes are sporting here in 2023 uh, as they have the um, kind of traditional tunnel, but the run-through portion is a big antelope A with the antelope head as well. So uh, lots of exciting things here to to mark the start of the 2023 uh, football season. And the Abernathy Antelopes would love to get it started off um, 1-0, and and they've got an opportunity to do that as we get ready to start the second half as Abernathy, behind a strong defensive performance and just enough big, big plays, they've got a 7 to nothing lead here at the halftime. As right now, Coach Wiley is... Uh, out talking to the official, I think figuring out um, who's going to kick where and to what end of the field and, and all of that good stuff. As everybody working out some uh, opening night uh, things here tonight in Childers. But all in all, it's been a, a solid first half and a good start to the season here in 2023. Glad to have you along for the ride. Again, the Childers Bobcats wearing their all blues tonight, trimmed in white while the Abernathy Antelopes in their road whites tonight trimmed in maroon with the maroon helmets. Abernathy will get the football to begin the second half this evening as Childress, they got it to begin the ball game tonight. That opening drive for the Bobcats, if you remember, uh, ended in a fumble uh, that was recovered by Dane Provost on a mishandled pitch behind the line of scrimmage, and Dane Provost promptly pounced on it for the Abernathy Antelopes. 12 minutes on the clock here to start the third quarter as Childress will be kicking it right to left and the Antelopes will run it back left to right here on your internet dial. Again, glad to have you with us. The Abernathy Sports Network tonight. Proud coverage of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. Back deep for the Antelopes as we've got number 22, Rolando Martinez, standing at about his own 10-yard line, set to return the kickoff. It is a line drive kick that wanes a little bit to the left side, running it back from the 15. Here come the antelopes. That could be a face mask. Is no flag, but good coverage by children. It's at about the 27-yard line, running it back for the antelopes. Is Lance Ponciano. Number 12 as he takes it out to about the 26-yard line where it'll be first down and 10 here for the Antelope. So we talked about it in the pregame. Abernathy needed a good start. They got that. Now if you could follow that up with a good start here in the second half, that would be a huge uh, momentum swing here early in the second half for the Antelope. First down and 10 as Abernathy marches it left to right, starting from their own 26-yard line. Elijah Trejo is in the gun as he takes the snap. He's got time. Good blocking by that offensive front. Trejo going to throw it down the field, though, into double coverage, and it is incomplete. Good coverage down the field. It was kind of zone or double coverage, if you will, for the Bobcats, and the pass harmlessly falls incomplete. Intended for number one, Brody Shadden. Uh, and it will be second down and 10 here coming up for the Antelopes. Second and 10 from their own 26, just underway here in the third quarter. 11.45 left to play 
in the third quarter is in the shotgun again is Trejo. Trejo's going to take the snap, hands the ball off up the middle. Pretty good push up front defensively once again by Childress as it's led by number 11. That is Scout Smith. There was a couple of other blue jerseys there as well, and it will be third and 10. No gain on the antelope handoff. Is really Abernathy's offense tonight's been via the big play. They've had a hard time uh, sustaining drives. Would like to see him string together some first downs here if they could. In the gun is Trejo. Oh, man, that's a bad snap, a low snap, and it's a fumble recovered by Childress in the backfield. As the Bobcats have it, as there was a number of low snaps in that first half that Trejo had a hard time handling. That one uh, jumps up to bite the antelope and a golden opportunity for Childress to draw even here in the third quarter early on. Abernathy turns the ball over, and it will be first down and 10 for the Bobcats as they will take over at the Antelope 12. First turnover of the ball game for Abernathy, and it'll be first down and 10 for Childress. A big task now here for that Antelope defense. As again, Drake Ray been at quarterback for Childers. He takes the snap. He hands the ball. Darion Mathis tries to bounce it left. The Antelope defense bounces left as well. Number 12, that is Lance Ponciano in on the stop there for the Antelopes. No gain. It'll be second down and 10 coming up here for the Bobcats. Again, from the Antelope 12-yard line. If Tell you what, if the Antelopes can weasel out of this one without giving up any points, you would feel very fortunate as a forced turnover has set Childress up nicely here to begin the third quarter. In the shotgun again is Rabe. He takes the snap again, hands off to Mathis, but again a pretty good push defensively up front by the Antelopes as Mathis carries it inside the 10 down to about the 8. Uh, and a gain of 4, maybe almost 5 yards, and it'll be third down here for the Childress Bobcats. As we near 10 minutes to play here in the third quarter of the ball game. Abernathy's defense with their backs against the goal line here. Third down. Childers can still get a first down inside the five. In the shotgun is Ray. Mathis is back there with him as well. There's the snap. Ray wants to throw. Now he scrambles in the pocket, tries to get free. He's being chased inside the five, pushing for the goal line. That's a tough run by the quarterback for Childress, Drake Rabe, and a late flag flies in. That may be extracurricular against the Antelopes as some frustration at the end of the play. As we will check the penalty for sure, but that may be an unsportsmanlike conduct flag here against Abernathy. It's not that you can get much closer to the goal line than what he already was, as it is an uns a personal foul, if you will, on Abernathy. Not unsportsmanlike, but a personal foul against the Antelopes. Half the distance, and it's going to be first down and goal for the Bobcats. 9.46 to go here until, half t until the end of the third quarter, and Childress trying to punch it in. As there's the snap, this time is flags fly. I think Abernathy was offsides. The snap actually went to number 11, Scout Smith, who takes it into the end zone. It was a defensive offsides, and the Abernathy Antelopes have surrendered their first points of 2023 as taking advantage of the first Abernathy turnover. It's a one-yard touchdown run by Childress's Scout Smith, and just like that, Childress a PAT away from tying up the football game. As on to attempt the point after here will be Alejandro Romero for the Bobcats. As there's the snap, there's the hold, the kick is up, and the kick is good. And with 9.35 left in the third quarter, we're back where we started, tied at 7. As tonight you're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football. The Abernathy Independent School District is the heartbeat of our community. As a TEA recognized district, our students excel at the highest level on the field, in the classroom, in FFA and 4-H activities, band, and so much more. 
Abernathy ISD offers a variety of college level and dual credit courses to prepare our students for the future. We are proud of our students and wishing them the best of luck this season and all that they do. At Abernathy ISD, we are students today, leaders tomorrow, and antelopes forever. And once again, good evening and welcome back here into Fair Park Stadium here tonight in Childress, Texas. Again, glad to have you with us tonight. We've got a good one with 9.35 left to play in the third quarter as the Abernathy Antelopes and the Childress Bobcats are now all square at seven. Uh, both teams taking advantage of turnovers on their first drives of the half. Abernathy did so to begin the ball game. Childress does so here in the second half as Abernathy turns it over on their opening possession and it's a short field that the Bombcats able to cash in on and take advantage of and we are tied at seven. Brand new ball game with 9.35 left here in the third quarter as the Childress Bombcats are set to kick it off once again here in the quarter and Rolando Martinez back deep to return it for the Antelopes. End over end kick again, angling towards the left side. This time it's going to go out of bounds. So that's going to draw a penalty kick or a penalty flag on the kick out of bounds. And that should start Abernathy in good position, field position wise, unless they make them re kick or they can also move it out to, I believe it's the 35 yard line, or maybe it's the 25 is where they would move it out to, is the free kick out of bounds. We're not quite yet in mid-season form either. Yep, that is right. They'll move it out to the, well, it's the, not the 25 or the 35. It's the 30-yard line. So decent starting field position for the Abernathy Antelopes. As Abernathy needs something good to happen, keep the mojo going in the right direction here for the Antelopes. Trejo in the gun takes the snap. Hands it off, trying to come near side is Alan Macias. He picks his way up near the 40 yard or near the 35 yard line, rather. And uh, he's going to be a little slow to get up. As that's a gain of five for Monkey, though, to the 35 yard line as he's uh, battling through some pain here tonight. You can tell, again, nursing a sore hip most of this week was Alan Macias. You definitely need him healthy for the season. So. Keep an eye on that. You don't want to overdo him here on the first game of the year in Childress. In the shotgun is Trejo again. Trejo's going to take the snap. He hands the ball off again. It's Macias. Macias pushes out across the 35 for a short gain of a yard, maybe two, and it's going to be third down coming up here for the Abernathy Antelopes as third down and about four going to be needed to extend this drive for Abernathy, third down and four coming up for the Antelopes. Eight and a half minutes and rolling left to play here in quarter number three. In the shotgun again is Trejo. Trejo's going to take the snap, uh, fakes the handoff, throws it to the right side, and it's incomplete as no one really close to that one. A quick trigger there by Trejo, and it, Harmlessly sells to the sideline, fourth down, facing the Abernathy Antelopes. And so from your own 36-yard line, this may be a punting situation for Abernathy. You can't gamble with right now Childress having the momentum to begin this third quarter. You've got to punt it away and try and pin, pin the Bobcats deep because your defense, for the most part tonight, has played well for the Abernathy Antelopes. As Abernathy looks to punt it away and hopefully can pin him deep as it's a end over end kick, but it is short. It does luckily take an Abernathy bounce at midfield and it rolls out across the 40 down to about the 39 yard line. And so it does get helped out by an antelope bounce, but that is where that is where the 
Childress Bobcats will start first down and 10 from their own 39-yard line. 7.58 left to play here in the first quarter tonight, seeing some players on both sides cramp a little bit. We've had some hydration timeouts as well, just dealing with some still summer heat here in the Texas Panhandle and West Texas region. Again, another day today near 100 or right out of, right around 100 degrees, depending on where you were at across the region. It's cooled off a little bit and turned into a nice evening, but nonetheless, some of those things you're still going to have to deal with. 7.58 left, and Rabe is in the shotgun. He takes the snap, hands it off to Mathis, and the Antelope defense swarms Mathis behind the line of scrimmage as the first one there and holding on for dear life was Dane Provost, number 14, coming up to make the tackle there for the Lopes, and it will be second down as they throw Mathis for a loss on the play. All the way back down to the 32-yard line. Loss of about six. And it'll be second down and long here for the Bobcats. Is in the shotgun. Looking to throw is Drake Rave. He does so in the flats. He's got a receiver, and it's caught in the flat. A chance to make a move as the defender fell down. Number 22, Logan Oldham. Hauls it in and races for a first down near midfield. Then we might have a late hit out of bounds across the way here on the Antelopes as flags do fly in at the end of the play. As we'll wait on the official word, but it may be a hit out of bounds here against Abernathy. That is going to be the call as Abernathy continues to rack up lots of penalty yards here tonight. On the road in Childress, penalties have been a detriment for the Antelopes. It was a 16-yard reception catch and run, and then you can tack 15 more on due to the personal foul penalty. Things getting a little dicey here now for the Antelopes. In the shotgun, again, is Rabe. As Rabe takes the snap, it's a screen pass to the near side. It is caught, and then trying to split defenders was number 80, Cash Hightower, as he's down near the 30-yard line, gets about five yards on first down, and it'll be second down and five coming up here for the Bobcats as we roll inside of seven minutes to play now in the third quarter. In the shotgun with three receivers to the far side, Ray being chased out of the pocket. Now rolling, throws it towards the end zone, and it is incomplete at the five-yard line as the receiver tried to come back and make a play on it. There were a couple of defenders back there as well for the Antelopes, uh, including number five, Maverick Shadden, who may have gotten a hand on that one. But we've got a timeout on the field. This may be one of those hydration timeouts that we've had a few of here tonight as well. We've had some extra timeouts that I was trying to figure out what those were. This may be a hydration timeout for the two teams to catch their breath and, and get a drink as we've had uh, multiple players on both teams now cramping a little bit. It's getting at that point in the evening where you're going to start dealing with some of that. Again, just with the warm temperatures, not warm, just flat-out hot temperatures, that we've had, again, on our way here, right near 100 degrees today again in the Texas Panhandle. Um, and so uh, taking all the precautions, you appreciate that um, with this officiating crew and just making sure everybody uh, stays safe and get, gets what they need. We've got a good ball game here tonight as we play midway through the third quarter, tied at seven, the Abernathy Antelopes and the Childress Bobcats as it's going to be third down and five when we come back to play here uh, in just a minute. Third down and five facing this Childress offense is Abernathy. Uh, they're having to overcome some uh, self-inflicted wounds tonight, lots of penalties. Childress has had some as well, but a uh, plethora of penalties tonight for the Antelopes have really negated some big plays when Abernathy's been on offense, and it's uh, given a little bit of extra yardage to Childress as well, especially here 
in the second half as Childress gaining a little momentum. In the shotgun on third and five, here is uh, Drake Rabe. He takes the snap, tosses to Mathis on the right side. Mathis tries to stretch it. The antelope defense is there, but Mathis does a good job of getting free. Mathis still on his feet inside the 20-yard line, and it's going to be a first down run for Darion Mathis. That may be uh, the longest run of the night for the talented running back from Childress that had over 1,100 rushing yards a year ago. First down and 10 for the Bobcats in the shotgun again is Ray looking to throw with an empty backfield. Comes to the near side, and it is dropped at the 14-yard line. Wide open was the receiver, number 80, Cash Hightower, but he's not able to hold on. Antelope catch a break right there, and it will be second down and 10 as we've got 6.09 left to play here in the first half, or third quarter, excuse me, of the ball game. Abernathy trying to keep this one knotted at seven if they can. You go back there to those final seconds of the first half, you would have loved if you were Abernathy to find a way to get in the end zone. We're not able to, and so now Abernathy trying to keep this one even for the time being. Tied at seven midway through the third quarter. In the shotgun is Rabe, and there is movement up front as another flag flies. As that's going to be a false start penalty against Childress. That'll back them up five. It goes from second down and 10 now to second down and 15. Back out across the 20 to the 23-yard line. So see if Abernathy can take advantage of a Childress five-yard penalty. Second down and 15 in the shotgun. Again is Rabe. Rabe takes the snap, hands the ball off underneath, is trying to fight his way inside the 20. He is number 22, Logan Oldham, the ball carrier. As he takes it close back to the original line of scrimmage, Gain of four, and it's an opportunity here for the Antelope defense. Is third down and 11 facing the Bobcats here. Third down and 11 from the 19-yard line. Tied at seven. We're under five and a half minutes now left to play in this third quarter. Big play on third down and long, maybe two down territory anyway. In the shotgun is Rabe. Ball on the ground. It's on the ground. Abernathy trying to pounce on it. And they do. As the Abernathy Antelopes recover the fumble, I believe it was number 60 for the Abernathy Antelopes. That is Jake Harkey, the sophomore, 6'1", 215, I believe is who got that one for the Antelopes. If I'm not mistaken, at the 24-yard line, as Abernathy's defense does it again, it's a defensive stand for the Antelopes brought to you by the South Plains Auto Ranch in the second forced turnover of the night by the Antelope defense. And Abernathy keeps this one knotted up at seven, and it's first down and 10. Abernathy will take over just inside their own 25-yard line. Big defensive play there for the Antelopes is Abernathy, they're going to maybe have to take a pin. They're going to have to take a timeout here because Abernathy was about to be whistled for a delay of game as they didn't have the right personnel on the field. Again, some kind of self-inflicted mistakes, some of them common for a, a season opener, especially when you've got as many new guys in the lineup as the Antelopes do. But, man, you've got to get people in the right place at the right time because that's a timeout that you might need later on in the ball game. But Abernathy has to burn one to avoid a five-yard penalty. So we will, uh, again, keep it right here for the quick timeout. With 5.23 left to play in the third quarter, Abernathy and Childress all knotted up at seven. Abernathy's lone touchdown coming tonight on their first offensive play from scrimmage, a 40-yard touchdown run by Levi Carrillo. And then uh, here early in the second half, Childress tying it up on a Scout Smith one-yard touchdown run. In the shotgun is Elijah Trejo. Now with a man in motion, Trejo going to take the snap. Handoff going to go 
up the middle and a big push defensively by Childress at that line of scrimmage, maybe a yard at best there on the handoff, handoff up the gut. It'll be second down and nine here for the Abernathy Antelopes as we go inside of five minutes to play now in the third quarter. Abernathy and Childress continue to be tied at seven in the shotgun. Low snap again for Trejo. Trejo just has to jump on it, and the ball still loose. Who's going to get it back at the 12-yard line as Trejo is he able to get it back? I think he was, but it's a big loss on the play. That's what set up Childress's only touchdown of the night, and it was a very similar snap as lots of uh, low snaps that Trejo has had to deal with here tonight. He's handled most of them, but a couple of them have been disaster or near disaster, and it's third and forever now for the Abernathy. The Antelope's a big loss on the play back inside the 15-yard line to the 14, and it will be third down and long. Abernathy needs to get all the way out to the 34-yard line to move the sticks here. In the shotgun is Trejo. He takes the snap. Looking to throw, scrambles in the pocket, and he is going to be sacked back inside the five-yard line as number 74, Ethan Ferguson, comes up to make the tackle. And that's a sack in the backfield for Ferguson all the way back at the five-yard line. And on fourth down and a long ways, the Abernathy Antelopes are going to be forced to punt it away. So Childress going to get good field position out of this one as Abernathy going to be punting from their own end zone. Abernathy punting it away from their own end zone. They do get the kick away. It is a line drive kick that's going to be kind of fumbled at the 42-yard line and picked up. Now running it back, flags fly. This one's going to come back anyway is on the run back is number 80. That is Hightower, but a flag flies in the Childress backfield, and I think this is going to negate the short return that was there and back Childress up just a little bit. As it is a block in the back, going to be the call against the Bobcats during the return. And so punting it from seven yards deep in your own end zone, that's about the best you could have hoped for for the Abernathy Antelopes, a short return, but even that negated by a penalty that's going to back Childress up to the 48-yard line of the Abernathy Antelopes. So 48 yards of real estate in front of the Bobcats as they take over uh, here first down and 10. Another short field, though, for Childress. Once again, the Antelope defense, who's played really well tonight with their back against the wall, just a little bit. In the shotgun with three receivers to the near side, Rabe hands off up the middle. I believe that was Darion Mathis again who goes for a short gain right to the middle of that antelope defensive line, a gain of just a yard or so, and it will be second down and nine coming up here for the Bobcats as we tick down inside of three minutes left to play here. In the first or in the third quarter of the ball game, we remain tied at seven, headed for a pretty good finish here tonight, maybe in Childress, Texas. Again, glad you're with us tonight on the broadcast. Second down and nine. As in the shotgun, again is Drake Rabe. He takes the snap again, hands it off, trying to dance near side. Mathis lost his footing in the backfield, and then reaches back for the line of scrimmage, and that's it for Darion Mathis. And it's going to be third down coming up here for the Bobcats. Third down and about eight, almost nine, from the 47-yard line with 2.05 left to play here in the third quarter and counting. A big third down here is the Antelope's bid for another stop on defense. In the gun is Ray. He takes the snap of the man in motion. Now he rolls right, flags fly, and it blows the play dead. 
that usually means it's on the offense when the play is blown dead. And it's false start against the Bobcats. So that'll back them up five. And that makes a third and almost nine. Third and almost 14. A big chance here for Abernathy to get off the field again defensively if they can with 143 left to play. In the shotgun, again, is Drake Ray. He takes the snap, rolls to the near side. Now Ray being chased, and he just throws it away as in hot pursuit defensively number 14. That is Dane Provost. He's played well defensively tonight for the Antelopes, and it's another defensive stand for the Abernathy Antelope defense. South Plains Auto Ranch proudly sponsors our defensive stops this year, and the Antelopes just got another one as it's going to be a punting situation here for the Bobcats. With 1.18 left to play here in the third quarter. Abernathy going to get another opportunity here on offense in a seven-all game. That's a pretty good punt, a spiraling punt that takes a Childress bounce inside the 15-yard line and it is going to roll dead at about the 13. And right now, the Bobcats are winning the field position battle here in the second half, as almost this entire half has been played on this Childress side of the field. See if Abernathy can't get something positive to happen on offense here and get the momentum going back in their direction. Here late in the third quarter, 106 left to play here in this third quarter as we remain tied at seven. Again, glad to have you with us tonight, the season opener from Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. First down and 10 for Trejo and the Antelopes as they take over from their own 13-yard line. As uh, 87 yards of real estate between Abernathy and the goal line as they take over. Again, glad you're with us tonight. A flag flies. What do we got? We've got another timeout on the field, it looks like. As before the delay of game, I guess, timeout by Abernathy. They've already used two. We'll take a quick one. We owe some sponsors a, a, a break as we'll be right back. You're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football. As a leader in the agriculture industry, Nutrient Ag Solutions is committed to helping West Texas growers reach their greatest potential. The professionals at Nutrient Ag Solutions pride themselves as being known as the ag retailer of the future with their focus on customer service. An emphasis is consistently placed on providing the best performing chemical, fertilizer, and seed products financing programs, and second-to-none technology used in crop consulting and field application for their customers. With six retail locations located nearby, they are equipped with the experienced agronomists that are able to work alongside you to create the ideal plan for your operation. David Carver and his crew would like to say thank you for those that have entrusted them for years to service their needs and would also like to wish the Antelopes a successful and blessed year. As we welcome you back out of the timeout, first down and 10 for the Antelopes is handoff going up the middle. Not much doing right there in the middle of the field. Actually a loss of one on the carry and it'll be second down and 11 coming up for the Antelopes is really here in the second half of the ball game, Childress really flexing their muscles on that defensive front. Um, Abernathy having a hard time creating any holes there in the middle of that defensive line. Second down and long for Abernathy as Trejo is in the gun. He takes the snap, he rolls near side, and he's going to throw it to the flats, diving to the ground, an opportunity just shy of the 30 to come up with that one, but it falls incomplete is Rolando Martinez, the intended target on the near sideline. And it will be third down and 11. Zabernathy having a hard time establishing any 
offensive momentum here in the second half of the ball game. As we're inside of 30 seconds to play until the end of the third quarter, rolling near side as Trejo takes the snap, throws it to the middle of the field and diving and getting a hand on it was a defender for Childress as that was number 25. Cashton Patterson batting it down. And another defensive stop by Childress. Some more cramps out on the field as well. Had a lot of those here tonight. We've had several stoppages of play. Um, what they're calling hydration breaks here tonight in Childress. That's going to play a factor as we head to the final 12 minutes of the ball game here tonight. So both teams going to head to the sideline and get one of those hydration breaks right now. And there's also a, a Bobcat slow to get up on the field as well. Let's take a quick timeout and come back. You're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football. For over 100 years, Plains Land Bank has specialized in financing rural property. We are passionate about agriculture and ensuring that producers are successful. Your land is more than just your livelihood, it's your legacy, and we want you to see it grow for generations to come. Let us help you own a piece of Texas. Come visit our Plainview office today or give us a call at 806-296-5579. At Plains Land Bank, we are a proud supporter of our West Texas high school student athletes. And as we welcome you back, as the Antelopes and Bobcats quickly push back on the field after that short break, and the Antelopes punt it as Childress making a fair catch out near the 40 yard line. So it'll be good starting field position again here for the Childress Bobcats, as it will be first down and 10. For the Bobcats, they will again start in Abernathy territory as the Antelopes continue to live dangerously here in the second half of the ball game. First down and 10, the Bobcats will have it at the Abernathy 43, almost 44-yard line. Ball spotted right in the middle of the field, 12 seconds left here in the third quarter. In the gun, there's the snap by Ray. He fakes the screen pass. Now he's being chased. Gets away, rolls right, throws it in the flat. He's got a receiver at the 30-yard line and now falling across the 30 and picking up a first down for Childress. That's a good job by Ray, keeping the play alive there for Childress in the backfield. And that will be the final play, I believe, here of the third quarter. So three quarters in the books tonight from Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. It's the Antelopes and Bobcats tied at seven. Uh, Bobcats on the move when we come back. You're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football. DB Media specializes in all things audio, video, and lighting. From designs and installs tailored to your commercial application, to concerts and corporate events, and even studio recording and mixing for bands and artists, DB Media has you covered. DB Media is a proud supporter of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes this season. And once again, good evening, Antelope fans, and welcome back here inside Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. We switch into the field and head to the fourth quarter tonight with Abernathy and Childress still tied at seven here as it'll be second down facing, actually it'll be first down and ten as the yard marker across the way says second down, but it'll be first down and 10 for the Bobcats as they try and break a seven all tie here as we head to the fourth quarter. They've got it on Abernathy's end of the field. I don't know that there was a snap one taken in that third quarter uh, that wasn't on Childress's side of the field. Abernathy dodging some bullets, fortunate to only give up the one score and the Antelope defense with their back against the wall again here. On first down and 10 in the shotgun. Handoff coming to the near side. Darion Mathis as flags fly again in the Bobcat backfield. Two flags fly in. Don't know if it's for the same thing or not. We'll check it right here as uh, we've got a... Looks like a holding call. Thought that's what it was going to be, but waiting for the verification. Holding against the Bobcats will back them up 10 yards.
and first and 10 becomes first down and 20 again. Both teams really plagued with a lot of penalties tonight. I feel like the Antelope's maybe a little bit more. That's not a number we have, but both teams have had some self-inflicted wounds as far as the uh, laundry on the field is concerned. First down and 20 now for the Bobcats. In the shotgun is Drake Rabe is ready to take the snap. He does so, fakes the handoff. He rolls left, lots of open field, floats it, and has a receiver in the middle of the field who makes a move down the sideline, getting free, and an athlete making a play. It is Logan Oldham, number 22. He gets free, and he gets to the end zone. It's a 40-yard touchdown pass and catch. Logan Oldham on the reception as he did a good job getting free and making a nice move down on that far left sideline. He gets into the end zone, and Childress has taken the lead for the first time tonight on a big pass and catch to Logan Oldham, and it's 13-7 Bobcats here pending the PAT. As the extra point try is up, and it is good. And with 11-19 to go in the ball game now, Childress has taken their first lead at 14-7. We'll take a timeout and come back. You're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football. St. Isidore Catholic Church has long been a staple in the Abernathy community and is a proud supporter of our young people. Led by Father Brian, we offer Mass daily at 8.30 a.m. and on Sundays at 9 a.m. with adoration on the first Friday of each month at 7 p.m. At St. Isidore Catholic Church, we are praying blessings over our students for a great school year and are wishing the Lopes and Lady Lopes the best of luck this season. If you have any questions about our church, give us a call at 806-298-4278. And once again, welcome back here, Antelope fans, to Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. Voice of the Antelopes, Ty Horsford with you here tonight as Childress has taken their first lead of the night on a big pass and catch, a 40-yard strike to Logan Oldham. And he takes it all the way in for the touchdown. 14-7. Childress has the lead. And most of that done on the legs of Oldham. He caught the short pass and made some defenders miss over there on the antelope sideline and scampered all the way down into the end zone. 14-7 now. Childress has the lead. And uh, the Antelope's going to get it back as Childress is set to kick it off. It's a high end over end kick that is going to bounce. Abernathy's going to return it. It's going to be Rolando Martinez trying to get free. Martinez gets away. 40, 45 yard line. A good return by Rolando. All the way out near midfield. And so Abernathy, with their best starting field position of the second half, as they now are faced with trying to come up with an equalizing score. Here with 11-19 to go in the ball game. It'll be first down and 10 for the Antelopes. They're going to say Rolando was out of bounds at the 47-yard line of Abernathy. So it'll be first down and 10 here for the Antelopes. Again, 11-19 now left to play in the ball game. Abernathy trailing Childress 14-7. The Antelopes led 7 to nothing at the half. In the shotgun here is Trejo. He takes the snap. He hands the ball off to Macias, who plunges forward near midfield, trying to get what he can in the trenches. A gain of two, almost three, and it'll be second down coming up here for the Antelopes. As again, some more cramps out on the field, which may lead to another pause in the action here. As a children's Bobcat, Slow to get up again, though, I think just dealing with some cramping issues. I've had that going both ways here tonight. It'll be second down in a short eight, long seven here for the Antelopes. 11.03 left to go in the game. Abernathy trails 14-7. They've got to find a way. To get in the end zone. In the shotgun again is Trejo. Trejo takes the snap. 
looking to throw. Has a receiver overthrown, though, and it's almost intercepted as the pass was overthrown. And having a play on it was Mark Willis for Childress, but he couldn't hang on. And it is going to be third down and seven coming up here for the Antelopes. Again, the Abernathy Antelopes have had a hard time mustering up any offense uh, outside of a couple of big plays tonight. As now they're facing a third down and seven. In the shotgun is Elijah Trejo. Takes the snap, rolls right, wants to throw. And I guess it was batted down as that was in traffic across the way. An incomplete pass. And it will be another fourth down facing the Abernathy Antelopes here on the road. And still with over... Ten and a half minutes to play. You've still got to play it true, and the Antelopes are going to punt. At least uh, they're going to reverse the field, something they haven't done here in the second half, and put a long field in front of the Bobcats. But that Antelope defense, who's been asked to do a lot tonight, uh, going to be faced with another test. Abernathy does get the punt away, and it's going to bounce down inside the 20, so a good punt there for the Antelopes as Brody Shadden gets a punt away as all special teams this year brought to you for the Antelopes by Reb Lopez with Exit Realty. And that's a good punt for Brody Shadden pinning the Bobcats back inside their own 20-yard line. First down and 10 facing Childress now as Abernathy needs to get the ball back and find a way to get an equalizing score again as Abernathy trails 14-7 to now. They led this one 7 to nothing at the half, but they've been unable to find any momentum here in the second half of the ball game. In the shotgun is Ray, but flags fly before the snap. And it's going to be offsides again. I believe somebody on that offensive line for Childress maybe flinching in a false start penalty against the Bobcats. Going to back Childress up five, and it'll be first down and 10, becoming first down and 15 for the Bobcats. To tell you what, a penalty would be just, I mean, a turnover rather would be just what the doctor ordered as a handoff going right to the left tackle. Not much doing. A good job up front defensively. I tell you what, that defensive line tonight for the Antelopes is has played well, and they've stood strong for a lot of the night, really impressed with the effort of that position group here this evening, that defensive front for the Antelope. Second down and 12, almost 13, a loss of a couple of yards there on the run for Childress as we go down under 10 minutes to play here in the ball game. 14-7, the Bobcats continue to lead in the shotgun rave. Empty backfield wanting to throw, does so to the near side, wide open out across the 25-yard line is hauling it in is number 20. That is, once again, Darion Mathis for the Bobcats. And he got close to a first down. He may be a yard short when he was pushed out of bounds here on the Bobcat sideline. Third down and short coming up for Childress. Third down and one. They hurry it to the line in the shotgun, and there is going to be a free play for Childress as Rabe, no, Rabe knows it. He airs one out down the sideline. It's incomplete, but on third and one, Abernathy is going to be called for a defensive offsides penalty here, and that's going to move the chains for the Childress Bobcats. Rabe alertly knew that was going to be the penalty, and so he took a shot down the field. It's definitely what you want to do in that position if you're the offense. And it'll be a fresh set of downs here for the Bobcats with 9.49 to play here in the game. 14-7, Childress continues to lead. In the shotgun is Rabe, takes the snap. Swing pass to the far side, Mathis. He cuts it upfield across the 35 out to the 40-yard line. Got five maybe six yards on the swing pass, and it will be second down and about four coming up here for the Antelope, 
antelope defense here against this Childress offense. We near nine minutes to play now in regulation. Second down and four from the 40-yard line. In the shotgun is Ray, takes the snap. He looked to hand it off. Nobody was there, but then he scrambles away and turns it into a positive play. Credit Ray for that. That's the second time that's happened tonight as he turned to hand it off to somebody in the backfield and nobody was there. So a busted play ends up being a couple of yards, and it will be third down and three coming up here for the Bobcats. From the 41-yard line, so a big chance here for the Antelope defense to try and get off the field. Third down and three from the 41-yard line. In the shotgun is Rabe. He takes the snap, hands it off to Mathis. Mathis tries to get free. Another flag comes in in the children's backfield. Would have been a first down run. For Mathis, but I think this one's coming back. Would have been about a three and a half, maybe four yard gain that would have moved the sticks, but I think Childress is going to be called for a hold here, and it's going to be holding on the Bobcats, going to give the Antelope defense another opportunity here to get off the field and maybe get the ball back and try and make something happen. Eight thirteen left to play here in the ball game. Third down and long coming up here for the Bobcats from the thirty-one yard line. Third down and thirteen. In the shotgun is Rabe. Takes the snap on third and long. Scrambles in the pocket. Airs one out down the sideline. It's incomplete. Double covered for the Antelopes. Almost triple covered down the field. As uh, the Antelope defense does their job, a defensive stand there for Abernathy. Again, those defensive stops on the broadcast brought to you by the South Plains Auto Ranch. And uh, this Antelope defense giving Abernathy's offense every opportunity here tonight on the road in Childress. As it will be a punting situation here for the Bobcats. And Rolando Martinez, number 22, will stand back deep to return the punt. A little bit of a low snap, but they get the punt away. It's an end-over-end -end kick. Takes a Childress bounce toward the sideline, and it's going to go out of bounds inside the Antelope 45-yard line. So decent field position again here for the Antelopes. Don't know how many more chances you're going to get with 7.47 left to play here in the ball game. Abernathy trails Childress 14 to 7. And the Antelope offense will take over at the 43-yard line. In the shotgun is Trejo. He takes the snap. He hands it off. It's a sweep around the corner for Carrillo as Levi Carrillo, the ball carrier. That's been the play that worked most tonight as it worked on the first play from scrimmage for a 40-yard antelope touchdown as Abernathy's been unable to score since. A gain of about three yards, almost four, on the end around to Carrillo. And it'll be second down and seven coming up here for the antelopes with 7.40 to play in the ball game. In the shotgun, Trejo fumbles the snap, and I think Childress got it. Yep, the Bobcats have recovered the fumble as Trejo just bobbled and dropped the snap, and the Bobcats recover the fumble, and it's a big turnover for the Antelopes who continue to struggle to find offense and another opportunity for this Childress offense to try and put this one away. 7.36 to go in the ball game, and Childress, they will take over at the Antelope 42-yard line. Ball going to be spotted on that left hash mark. But a 
big second turnover of the night, second turnover of the second half as well for the Abernathy Antelopes as they put the ball on the turf and they give Childress good field position here, leading by a touchdown. Rabe is in the shotgun, takes the snap, handoff goes to Mathis. Mathis pushing his way across the 35 down to the 32-yard line. Mathis picks up nine on the carry. That's one of his biggest carries of the night. Abernathy's done a good job defensively containing Darion Mathis tonight. But that goes for a gain of nine. And I'll tell you what, um, with as hot as it's been and uh, that antelope defense, they have been out there a ton here in the second half. And they've got their backs against the wall. They've played well tonight, but can only do so much. In the shotgun is Drake Rabe. Takes the snap, hands it off again, coming near side Mathis. A flag flies as Mathis fumbles the football, but he fumbles it out of bounds. But it's going to be another hold here, I think, against the Bobcats as the flag flies again in the Bobcat backfield. Holding against Childress will back him up 10 yards. Tell you what, that's been the, the penalty that's hurt Childress the most tonight is, uh, is holding. Lots of holding calls against Childress here tonight. That'll back the Bobcats up 10, second and one will become second down and 11. Let's see if Abernathy can take advantage. Running out of chances with 6.48 to go. In the shotgun is Rabe. Takes the snap. Handoff goes to Mathis. Mathis, Abernathy had him from behind, but he keeps his feet inside the 35. And that antelope defense is just getting tired now as Mathis carrying defenders. Close to a first down, depending on the spot. Maybe a yard short. It's going to bring up third down and short here for the... Nope. It is going to be a first down. As the officials signaling first down. So a first down run, a gain of 13 for Darion Mathis. And with six minutes and counting to go, handoff coming to the near side as Alan Macias comes up to make the tackle on Logan Oldham. I'll tell you what, Oldham's had a big game tonight for Childress as well, as that's going to be a gain of five, and that's going to take us down inside five and a half minutes left to play in the game before the Bobcats have to snap it again. Second down and five. It's Childress alertly taking all the time they need, letting the play clock run all the way down. Trying to run the clock out here on the Abernathy Antelopes is another handoff going to the right side for Childress. As again, it's Oldham, a first down run, and that's just going to keep the train moving down to this end of the field for Childress as the next snap will come inside of five minutes left to play in the ball game. His children's trying to put this one to bed. The Antelope defense trying to muster up one more stop to give their offense one more chance before this one's over here tonight. 4.55 and counting to go in the ball game. 14-7, Childress has the lead. In the shotgun again, is Rabe. He takes the snap. He hands it off. Coming to the near side is Darion Mathis. You have him wrapped up and can't make the play, and he finally is pushed out of bounds. And it's going to be another positive run for Darion Mathis as it appears you have him near the line of scrimmage, and he just makes a play and gets free. Second down and three coming up as Mathis picks up seven yards on the carry. 4.36 left here in the ball game. Childress looking for the knockout blow here on the home turf in the season opener. Antelopes desperately trying to scrap away a stop. In the shotgun again is Drake Rabe. He takes the snap, handoff up the middle. Oldham. Pushing and pushing. He's a tough cat to bring down. 
as it goes inside the 10-yard line down to the 7. There is a flag on the far side of the field, though. We've said that a lot tonight. The officials have gotten their money's worth here tonight. And we've got a flag against Childress. That's going to back the Bobcats up again. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout on the field. Maybe one of those hydration breaks, if you will. We'll take a quick timeout and come back. You're listening to Abernathy Antelope Football. And once again, welcome back here into Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. Voice of the Antelopes, Ty Horsford, back with you. And it is second down and eight coming up for Childress after the five-yard penalty prior to that hydration break timeout. And Drake Rabe is going to be in the shotgun on second down and eight. He's going to take the snap. He's going to hand it off to Oldham. Oldham is brought down by a host of antelopes at about the 13-yard line. And it is going to be third down. Third down and about four coming up here for Childress. From the 13-yard line, get last gasp effort here, see if the Antelopes can get a stop. It's probably two down territory. Not sure what kind of field goal kicker Childress has, but third down and four. As Rabe is in the gun again for the Bobcats, he takes a snap. This time he's going to keep it himself up the middle, and I think he runs for a first down. As nothing fancy, Abernathy just gets beat at the line of scrimmage. As a nice offensive push there for Childress, and it's first down and goal to go here for the Bobcats. This drive is slowly deflating the Antelope sideline. Now under three minutes to play in the ball game, 14-7. Childress, lead, Childress leads. Looking for the knockout punch in the shotgun is Rabe. Hands the ball off to Mathis. Flags fly again. And Mathis is brought down at about the seven-yard line. Going to be another offensive penalty here against Childress. With 2.34 to play. Still going to be first down, though. First down and goal. That is going to back Childress all the way up to the 17-yard line. Another holding penalty against the Bobcats. You know, that's going to be something that they emphasize and practice here in Childress this week. 2.22 and counting left to go in the game. In the shotgun 
is Rabe. Handoff goes to Mathis. He's pushed in the back, then bounces left, but the Antelope defense does stay with him. Short gain for Mathis, but more importantly for Childress, the clock continues to run, and Abernathy at best has one timeout left. I think they do have one timeout remaining. If you remember, they were forced to use a couple of timeouts uh, to avoid delay of game penalties. We talked about then that the Antelopes might need uh, those timeouts, and it would be nice to have those right now as the clock just running, running, running now down to 135 to go in the ball game. From the 15-yard line, second down and goal to go for Childress. In the shotgun, there's the snap. Handoff goes to Mathis. Mathis tries to get free, but he is pushed backwards. I tell you what, for the most part, uh, Abernathy has contained uh, the standout running back for Childress tonight, and it's going to be third down. Abernathy's going to finally take that final timeout with a minute six left to go in the ball game as Abernathy trying to get the ball back for one last gasp effort. It's a timeout on the field, but we will keep it right here. Special thank you to some of our sponsors, St. Clair and Massey Orthodontics, Lambert Insurance, the Junk and Farmer's Market, Nana's Donuts, Vista Bank, Web Vision Center, and the Abernathy Little League, all proud supporters of the Abernathy Antelopes and Lady Lopes. They help make these broadcasts possible. 106 left to play here in the ball game. Third down and goal. Out of the timeout for Childress. From about the 13-yard line. Probably two down territory here for the Bobcats. Abernathy trying to get the ball back for one last opportunity. There's the snap. Handoff goes again up the middle to Mathis. Again, the Antelopes get the stop shy of the 10-yard line. And so it's going to be fourth down here for the Bobcats. They're going to let the clock run down as far as they can. There will be 20, 25 seconds or so left in the ball game. They'll probably take a timeout. They'll run one play. At best, Abernathy will get it back with one or two snaps from scrimmage. Not sure what kind of field goal kicker Childress has. They could... For sure, I sit away with a field goal here, a points of any kind, obviously. But they will let the clock run all the way down to 21 seconds. And the Bobcats finally take the timeout just before the delay of game penalty. And so it'll be fourth down and goal coming up for Childress here. Again, 14-7, our score. Childress leads. Abernathy led this one 7 to nothing at halftime. And if you remember, they had a golden opportunity to get in the end zone in the waning seconds of the first half that would have given Abernathy a 14-0 lead heading into the locker room. Uh, they were unable to do so. And uh, Childress with a 14 nothing advantage here on the home turf in the second half of this one, trying to grind out what has been sloppy at times. Abernathy's played some good defense at times. Childress has played some good defense at times. Both offenses, a lot to work on, lots of penalties and lots of mistakes tonight. Again, partly expected in a season opener, but it's fourth down and goal to go from the 11 with 20 seconds left here in the ball game. They are going to try a field goal. This will be a 27-yard attempt that would, in fact, put it out of reach. A 27-yard field goal with 20 seconds to go. The snap, the hold, the kick is up, and the kick is good. 27-yard field goal is good, and that is going to extend the seven-point Childress lead to 10 at 17-7, to seven, and that is going to be just about it as the field goal try is good. And with 17 seconds to go here in the ballgame, 
the Childress Bobcats make it a 17-0 advantage here in the second half, and they now lead the Abernathy Antelopes by a score of 17-7. It's been a valiant effort tonight, and I tell you what, this game going to go a long ways for a group of Antelopes. You talk about only returning uh, four offensive and four defensive starters coming into this season. Lots of guys seeing their first heavy action on the varsity field playing a very quality opponent in the Childers Bobcats. And for a lot of tonight, uh, the Abernathy Antelopes held their own here on the road against Childress. What do we got here? There's a flag down on the field, I guess. Maybe, was that? What we got here? Is maybe, as everybody was going on, like it was a field goal was good. Oh, they called roughing the kicker on the antelopes, I guess, is the penalty call. I didn't realize the flag had been thrown. And so it actually remains 14 to 7. His points are coming off the board for Childress. And they're going to take a little more time here because it's first down and they can not even give Abernathy the football back. They can take a knee and the Antelopes cannot stop it again. As there is the snap, there is the knee. And the ball game is going to end at 14-7. The Childress Bobcats defeat the Abernathy Antelopes. That's a 14-0 advantage in the second half tonight for Childress. And they outlast the Antelopes by a final count of 14-7 in a warm and muggy night here at Fair Park Stadium in Childress, Texas. Lots of good some bad, too, for the Antelopes tonight on the road in the season opener. They battled a really good Childress team to the bitter end, but the Abernathy Antelopes fall to 0-1 on the season with a 14-7 setback here tonight. The lone Antelope touchdown <laughs> comes on the first offensive play from scrimmage tonight, a 40-yard touchdown run by Levi Carrillo. But other than that, the Antelopes have a hard time mustering any offense tonight and uh, Childress gets just enough as the Bobcats score on a Scout Smith uh, one-yard touchdown run and a Logan Oldham 40-yard uh, touchdown catch just inside the beginning of the fourth quarter um, that ends up being the difference in this one. Childress beats Abernathy 14-7 to here on the road tonight as it's going to be a long road trip home for the Antelopes. Our next broadcast comes your way next Friday night as the Abernathy Antelopes will be on the road again, but it will be a much shorter road trip as the Abernathy Antelopes will be in Slayton next Friday night to battle with the Slayton Tigers as Abernathy will look for their first win of the season. But thanks for being with us tonight um, as we will go ahead and get out of here. But Abernathy tr falls short tonight, 14-7 as uh, beginning the season, 0-1, but a lot of season left to be played as uh, that's all we've got tonight from fair park stadium in childers texas this is ty Horton.